Hey, what's up? It's Crack Cobain, and we're back with another episode of Camino Corner. Today, I got the Camino gang with me. I'm going to have everybody go down the line and introduce themselves, starting to my right. I'm your right, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Broken Puss, a.k.a. Genocidatron. I make metal and death. Nixon, hip-hop artist. Do that, a.k.a. Beretta. Jeremy Bryan, professional drummer. I used to rap. Facts. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Emmy Alexander. Uh, I make um, hip-hop artists as well. And we're all missing one person there, our boy Spaz, but he's here in spirit. Um, I'm going to do uh, this or that just to break the ice with everybody. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions. You just tell me, like, either this or that. You can deal with this or you can deal with that, you know? <laughs> Thank you for explaining the rules again. Yes, sir. Yes, Appreciate sir. That. So uh, we're going to talk about studio sessions. Do you prefer your session to be long or short? You can go down the line, same way. Long. Long. Short. No, I like them long because, you know, you got to take your time and you get what you need to do. Chush, I feel that. Yeah. I agree. I like it long. I think the longest session we ever had was like 12 hours between all of us. Yeah. Great yeah. time. <laughs> uh, do you prefer to create in the moment or prepare yourself? Oh, my God. In the moment. Emphatically. I want seven hours to do it, or else I'm screwed. Okay, you're such a metalhead. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I like to prepare beforehand. Okay. Uh, in the moment. Yeah. Emphatically. Emphatically. Like <laughs> that one, <laughs> that that word. <laughs> what about you, Emmy? Yeah, I like to do it like in the moment. Like I listen to a beat, and then like it makes you want to like write it in the moment. So, but I like to prepare sometimes. So it's really I'm fifty-fifty. Okay, for sure. I like to prepare. But I've also had like dope songs that I've done in the moment, like me and back in the days we would oh, yeah. we would have uh, <laughs> me me and Genocide Tron here would have 15 minutes to create a beat and write the verse at the same time, and we made some magic doing that. So th like I, think I can about say Matahari. both. Remember Matahari? Matahari, oh, bro. I was, was I was done with the verse by the time he was finished with the beat. That's right. So <laughs> that that was fun. Um, another one is gonna be uh. Do you prefer to record in a group setting or by yourself? In a group. Yeah, definitely in a group. Group? Yeah, most definitely group. I'm 50 50 on that. I love the group setting. When it's like, when it's us, I feel like, yeah, that's yeah. fire. Yeah, that's um, younger me, the more the merrier in the studio. Older me, I'd rather be my, by myself if I'm not with ECMG because I feel like I get more done. Just give me the engineer, let's roll. Um, do you prefer recording or performing? Damn, that's a really hard one. Yeah. Performing. Okay. Definitely performing. I can see that. Been doing it for 20 years. I want to keep going. I'd say 50 50. I feel that. Wow. What about you, do that? Uh, I'm going to say performing, but it recently I've been doing music with David that's separate from what we've done for the past, whatever, yeah, 20 we years. Yeah, we too. And it's been kind of fun recording. Okay. For the first time ever. Gotcha. S but I, I'm just going to go with performing. I've been doing that, so I'll just stick gotcha, with that one. Gotcha, gotcha. Emmy? Yeah, I'd rather record. I, I don't perform that much. I haven't been able to be on stage. That was that one time. What was it at the – it wasn't at the Goose. Yeah, it was the Goose and then the uh, – The well, Goose, we did uh, the show in, in Sweetwater. Yeah. And then the other one that we did the, at, the, at that club that got shut down, right? The, it was like at the upstairs in the second floor. You remember that? I don't remember that. We'll no, get back to that, oh though. Yeah, yeah. Mean. It was like, like on Flagler somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. In that some was the Sweetwater joint. That was the yeah. Sweetwater, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like performing, but I haven't, you know. Hmm. Do you perform, uh, prefer late nights or early mornings? As far as what? Recording? Recording. Oh, man. Late uh, night. Late night. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I'm going to have to say, like, early afternoon. Because you know me. I, I be getting too messed up. I feel you. That nighttime I feel you. You're breaking the rules. What about you do that? Uh, no, that's that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can go 50-50, so you can go early afternoon. I feel that. Late night. Uh, late night, everything. Everything's late night. I prefer mornings. Oh, what? Yeah, let me be the first person, the first session, bro. Like, give me a cup of hot tea. Let me get to rolling. Yeah, I, I like to go at night or like in the middle, like with, with Nick. Because every time he goes to the studio, me and him always, always tag along. So. No, I feel that. Older me. Well, young, I should say younger me. Older me likes mornings. Younger me, I prefer nighttime. Like, let me be in there as late as I can. 
But now I'm like, nah, bro, let me treat this shit like a job. Let me get it done early. You feel me? No. <laughs> uh, LPs or EPs? LPs. Definitely an LP. Okay. Yep. LP. What about you, Amy? Yeah, LP. My next project's, I'm trying to make an LP. I'm, I'm tied on this one. I oh. like both. Yeah, dude, EPs are for the week, man. Man, they fuck are that. For I, the week. It's not I enough like if music. You, sorry. If you yeah, can yeah, get yeah, a solid yeah, five songs and make it work, I, I can fuck with it. A good EP is better than, than a long LP, than yeah. a long yeah. LP that has right. too much going no, on. No, but right. I agree with that. Yeah. I do agree with that. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm 50-50 on it. Right. Uh, 16 bars or 12 bars? Oh, no, 16. <laughs> 16. 16. Yeah, 16. 12. will give you 27. <laughs> yeah, 34 and I'm 12. Bars. I'm 12. But you're going to give the most solid 12, though? No, but <laughs> but because of Genocidatron, sometimes it's a little bit... The too 27. Oh, the yeah, bitch yeah. be 27 bars, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to start going 12 <laughs> But what now. about eight bars at like 70 beats per minute? How about four? No. Okay. Eight bars at 70 beats per minute. That's what I like. I could do eight bars. But in 70 beats per minute? I mean, it's possible, yeah. yeah. Do, do like a like an ice cube like flow. Yeah. Chop and screw. I that's could right. make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that's enough of the uh, this or that. I think we broke the ice already. Um, Let's start it by telling them like how we all met each other. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's time well, uh, yeah, okay. we got time. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, starting from starting from from me, I guess. So I met I met Nixon. And it's hard to to not say the you know. You can Nick, say it. Uh, well, you I met Nicky you can say names. In, in third grade. He was the first person I met when I got to public school from like a real hardcore Christian cult school. <laughs> Very first person. I sat down in Miss Rosano's art no. class. What was her name? What was her name? Rosano. Something. I don't remember. Yeah, what I mean, he went to school. No, 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 no. no. Like well, yeah. yeah I, was, I was in that class. Yeah, but it was whoever that art teacher is in. I sat in that art class right oh, next to you. right. Yeah, bro. Did you see? No, I forgot about you. <laughs> you just opened <laughs> Pandora's box. All, all, the, all the drugs didn't mess up my brain. That <laughs> 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 no, they messed up mine. Um, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, met, I met Dudat in the pit of, well, maybe before. I knew Dudat in middle school, but I met him formally, and we started our metal band when I was about 15. At ninth grade? At Palmetto, what? Ninth, ninth grade? No, uh, the summer from ninth grade to, to tenth grade. But y'all met ninth grade in the pit, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. I, I right. played bass in marching band and he played percussion. But we, we like spoke that. to each other in, in middle school, but we weren't, it, it, yeah, uh, we weren't friends like, at all. We were right. just like, I know who that is. He knows who I am. That's and that, that's about right. Right, so. exactly. Okay. I met, actually, you're gonna have to fill in the blanks because I can't remember. No, well, motherfucker. Apparently, apparently, you met me in ninth grade and you thought I was a piece of shit because I was I, I always had my T-shirt off and I was talking to the girls. Oh, you, that's what you okay. told me. And I believe you. I was an arrogant asshole, so okay. I believe you. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I don't remember the exact circumstance we met on a on a music well, professional level. I mean, the level. friendship I think developed because of after you. high school. Though. Yeah, because of you. Right. Well, so the friendship here. Well, I hope what? we tell that story today because it's hilarious. Story? <laughs> but I remember I remember the first time we worked together, it was me being very, very angry, like I cannot take this anymore. This is mad. No, that wasn't the first time. We're gonna get to that though. Okay, okay. That okay. was like we had already known each other for like six months at that point, bro. I, I think the drugs have affected this Yeah, part it's of okay. We we'll get we'll get to that. <laughs> when did you meet Emmy? I met Emmy uh, with with Metal Nick and all these other people. I met I met him through you, I think, or or Sanchez, yeah, one of the two. Yeah. But um but Shout yeah. Shout out to Sanchez. Yeah. So there's going to be some crossover, but go ahead. All right. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, where do I begin? I mean, well, you talked so about Boston. You and David already yeah. spoke about well, how y'all met. Your, so. your vision of how you guys met. I'm the first thing I remember is uh, when your mom was doing lunch bunch with us. Oh. <laughs> she kept bringing lunch those McDonald's bunch. Big Macs and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, my mom always brought that fire. Yeah, shout out to your mom. Oh, that yeah, shit yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah. Even in high school. Those big, His mom used to have the best cheese at the crib, too. She oh, put yeah. me on baby Swiss. The fancy cheese. <laughs> and I, I'm a cheese head, so introducing me to new cheese was fire. I was like, baby Swiss? I ain't never seen this before. <laughs> was, that, was that his Warner or Sabag? It was Warner. It was Miss Warner, Warner, yeah. Wow. At Howard Drive Elementary. Yeah, then I met Duda through, uh, through Genocide over here. Because you know, okay. we had the metal band, Sane. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, why, why are you laughing, though? 
You just <laughs> you sitting on the couch not learning the song and just like humming some nursery rhyme or something. That's all <laughs> that I remember. That was one day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. was one day. That, but I'm saying that's all I remember. I'm not saying that Damn. there wasn't more than that. Yeah, we, but we played some solid shows. Well, we played some fun shows. You put the corpse paint on. It was great. Man, yeah, it was fucking awesome. <laughs> and then, Crack, we already talked about how we met. Yeah, we talked about that on, on Young A's show. Shout out to Young A. And then met Emmy through Sanchez. Because I was hanging out with Sanchez one day. He's like, oh, I was going to go hang out with Emmy. And I was like, I don't know who that is, but let's go. Yeah. <laughs> we showed up at his apartment, and that was it. Good yeah, show. Yeah. yeah, ever since then. And then one day, I think I was hanging out with Emmy, and he's like, I think uh, he wanted to go record with you. No. Record with you. That one song. Me? Yeah, yeah. He, oh, wow. Palmer wants to record No, you me. met me. You met me through, um, through the band. Oh, right, right, right. yeah. No, no. Deals well, I, meant, I, meant, I meant genocide over here. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, no, because Emmy wanted to go record with Genocide. And then okay. I was tagging along. That's when the band was getting a little rough. What's the, what's the right, band? right, right, right. Yeah. No, this is when I was in Ideals of the Corrupt. Yeah, the other band with Nick and all. I was playing drums. He was playing drums. Well, I was playing bass. Yeah, 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 yeah. a little that period there. I, with whatever. Right, yeah, yeah. right, with right. With Andy right. Alvarez and, yeah, and yeah, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And then that same day, Genocide was like, Nikki, you wanna you wanna write something to it? And I was like, I I I try it out. Yeah. And then the rest that was it. <laughs> the rest yeah. Didn't know you can rap. But, well, <laughs> shit, I didn't know neither. Here we are. <laughs> I don't think you did either. No, I didn't. <laughs> I yeah. think you were surprised as he, well. He was hitting that ICP flow. Shout out, woo woo, woo woo, woo woo, hoodie hoo. Do that with your with your uh, your take on it, bro. All right. Um, so Palmer Middle School. Right. Uh, the first interaction, um, for some reason, my middle school got a double bass pedal. So that means uh, you your can middle play. school got a double bass pedal. Yes, yes, they they got a double bass pedal. Southwood. Wait, what, what middle school did you go to? You went to Southwood. We went Wait, where Southwood. the fuck was Southwood that? Southwood had a double bass pedal. I don't know. I was there. I didn't know that. So hey, the Miss wow. Kaye knew how to get that equipment. They man. got. They got. <laughs> Miss Kaye was about that life. Oh, they got was. a sick drum set, double bass pedal. And then uh, the day that the double bass pedal showed up was the first time I talked to Palmer. Because I was sitting on a double bass pedal. I was like, I don't know what the fuck. What is this? This is pretty cool. Beautiful. And Palmer came up to me. He was like, get off this. I was like, I know what this <laughs> is. And he just started like, just trying to do the, the black metal, death metal, whatever. He was just like, that was my first interaction with Palmer. We became friends um, ninth grade to sophomore year summer because of metal music. And that's how um, we met, and whatever. Well, symphonic band, whatever. It was right. a drum line, I don't know. Something. Uh, Nikki, uh, I met Nikki ninth grade year in high school. He would wear, um, he had a, a little bit of a belly. He would wear uh, Demi Borgir shirts. And I was starting to get into metal. Damn, you didn't have to put the belly up. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> like, damn, put me on the spot. <laughs> but, but you were mean to me. Should I have back then? So. We, we had a math class together. And then I was like, I was like, I know that band and I like them. And then you're like, fuck you. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> then you just sat down. Damn, and then, dude, that was, I was the only one that was nice to you in ninth grade. I was like, that, that's a cool <laughs> band. I was like, I just found out about you. Like, you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So aggressive, Jesus. And then, yeah. and then so I didn't become friends with Nikki until after high school. Yeah. Because uh, of the, I was like, okay, not gonna do that again. <laughs> and uh, uh, Quan. I guess it was a um, band, bro. Band class, ninth grade year. Yeah. Uh, we were on the bass drum and I would rap. Yeah, right. So <laughs> we were in band together for at least two years. Yeah, two years. Two exactly years. Two years. Right. And uh, we became like pretty. I mean, we became close after high school, but we had band, the foundation. That was my introduction to Quan. It was a different Quan than what you see now. Gang banging ass, motherfucker. It, but it was fun. <laughs> it was a uh, entertainment. Uh, High school is crazy. Church. <laughs> Palmetto High School. Even though Jeff Bezos went there. I mean, that he's kind of crazy, crazy too, if you think about it, right? right? You got to be crazy to be a billionaire. It was a crazy school. <laughs> um, Very true. And then Emmy, I didn't meet him until really this whole <laughs> rap music started. Until like ECMG started. Right. Same country, really? Yeah. Shout, shout yeah. outs to oh, Mandy. Same country. Same country. Same same country. country. Yeah. Was it same yeah. country? Yeah, it was same country. Yeah. No, but, I feel but, like. Shout yeah. out to Mandy. I feel like you were hanging around when Ideals was a thing. She got that. Yeah, when, when, like around the bands and stuff, but then like we. St- I got yeah, then same. For sure. But yeah, so if it wasn't for Nikki, I never would have met Emmy, the full Dominican, half Dominican. 
combination. Uh, one third Dominican. Quarter, di quarter Dominican. Quarter Dominican. All right. <laughs> and that's it. Um, for me, I don't remember beating David in high school, but apparently I was a dick. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, me and me and Nick have a lot of the same friends from high school, but I didn't run into him in high school. But me and Dude, like I said, we were in, we were in band class together, and like. We would be doing everything but practicing what Mr. Smith wanted us to practice, but he rest in peace. So he'll be like beating on the bass drum and I'll be in there freestyling with Toon and uh and Charles and all of them. Yeah. And Calixto. We, we had oh some, what? We had I haven't some heard that name bro, we had some times in there. Wow. And then me and Emmy had um me and Emmy had weight training together sophomore year. So I knew him and I actually met him and got cool with him because of Terrence, who's actually like over in the cut. Y'all can't really see him right now. But um Terrence and Emmy was cool. And me, and me and Terrence was cool, so we met through him. Um, what about you, Emmy? Oh uh, yeah, we. I met David. Like I said, he when he started going around with the when you guys were in a band together, and we did the same country because uh, Hatfield, like uh, left, yeah, and me yeah, and yeah. it was Shout me. Shout out to Hatfield, though. Shout out to Hatfield. Yeah, it was after high school. Yeah, and then it was like what 2012, maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's about 2012. Yeah, more or less. Did we have a math class together? Yes, we were in a math. We were in. Uh, no FCAT training or something? <laughs> yeah, because we were stupid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we were. <laughs> they had a special. Yo, FCAT. they don't even they train. A, uh, a <laughs> special. They class. don't even take FCAT anymore. That's not the thing. But I knew I age. knew Nick back in high school. But like you said, I met him through Sanchez. We started coming around me like back when I used to live in the apartments. <laughs> and then like do that said, I met him. You know. And then I had you in, in weight training. Yeah. And did I have you in PE class? No, I never had you in PE. No, it was, was just weight, weight training, training, right? <laughs> Actually, okay. Emmy Emmy was one of the first people to ever produce uh, music for me. Now that I think about it, on my first e on my first EP, uh, Ending Gang Days, Emmy produced for me. Then um, Duda introduced me to David, because Duda uh, Duda moved down the block, like yeah. Duda moved down the block and he started coming over yeah. with like Chowder and shit. Shout out to Chowder, <laughs> and um, I was Glad like, oh, City. that's I was like, that's my fucking dog. We went to we went to high school together and we were in band together. Chowder, man. So I miss like. Chowder. I miss Chowder too, bro. That, that, that Latin City song was classic. Latin City. Latin City, Latin so, City. Um, so, dude, I started hanging around more, and then he was like, yeah, you should meet like, David. Well, real quick, like, how did this happen? I moved down the block, but how did the connect? Was it how through did, Chowder? Seemed, you coming to the house? Oh, no. Was it? It was Marcus and Chowder. Marcus and Chowder brought you to the crib. That's what it was. Yes. Okay. All right. Tell the story, crack. <laughs> Alien gang. <laughs> so, so, Marcus and Chowder brought... Brought do that to the crib, and do that. So do that's mom and my mom have always been pretty cool because they had the same uh, hairdresser. So my sister and do that sister knew each other. Um, they're around the same age, and they would all be in there getting their hair done together. So like there was always that connection like between our families and stuff. So him moving down the street was like he pops up at the house and my we mom didn't know like, this connection. We just no we, we did right. we we didn't actually know because we were never there. But it was like, oh, okay, like, yeah, they know each other. So do that, moved down the block. So he started coming over more. And then um, he introduced me to David. He's like, yeah, bro, my boy David does beats. And um, David comes to me with, uh, well, I go and meet David <laughs> for the first time. He comes to me with a CD. And um, we recorded like three songs back then for my first EP. Crack. Which was... Alien Gang Days. I'm getting to the story, bro. All right. <laughs> you better not story. avoid the story. This is before ECG. This is this is Wait. this is Alien Gang Days. Well, we were doing Same Country. Before no, Same this? Country wasn't wasn't yet. This is before we, Same Country. We, so so we dropped Same Country in 2009, and this was in between Same Country number this is two like that never dropped. Yeah, this and is 2011. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 2000. Remember, Same Country was just. You and Hatfield without no, Emmy no, 2009. That's impossible. 2009. No, 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 no. 2010. No. Yeah, 2009 2010. is with Hatfield. 2010 okay. is when we dropped right. the first Saint Country. Yeah. So, um, so in the process of us having, uh, <laughs> Alien Gang, uh, <laughs> some new people started coming around through, <laughs> through, through former, through other members of, of Alien Gang, and uh, people just weren't professional, and it's okay. Like, we we're, we're teenagers. We're 18, 19 years old. 20 at the most, so I understand if like you weren't professional at that time, but uh, there was one day where it was me and David sitting at the house, uh, <laughs> the other member of Alien Gang and this new guy pull up, and they're recording a, a freestyle, well, a free verse, I should say, and uh, the member of Alien Gang did his verse, and then we look over the other guy like, you ready? And he goes, I didn't bring my music. Oh. Like, I didn't bring my lyrics book, and 
uh, Dave and I look at each other and we both have the same like pissed look on our face. And <laughs> wait, 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 this was a planned recording session? This was a planned session, yeah. They drove from North Miami to come down oh, to yes. record music and didn't oh, the guy yes. left his book at home. Oh. Um so so David so David goes, Yo Quan, can I talk to you real quick? And we walk around the neighborhood for like a good fifteen minutes yep. to let him write a new verse. And um in that in that time David's like, Bro, I can't do this shit anymore. And I was like, Bro, I feel you completely and I go when they leave, I have something to show you that I've been working on. And um, I had already been working on ECMG, like the, the blueprint of how I wanted it to be. And I actually had your name as CEO, and I had your name as like, uh, as like head of. CFO? No, it wasn't CFO. It was <laughs> That's a bad idea. No, it was, no, I, no, I had myself as CFO. I had, I had myself as COO, as uh, Chief Organi uh, Operations, CEO. because I fucking trusted you and you brought everybody around. And I had that much faith in you. Um, David, I had as the head of like production and um, and just engineering and everything, because I knew like he he was focused on music and he loved the shit as much as I did. So I was like, all right, I know it's gonna be good. Um, Nick was already around and Emmy had been around. Like I said, Emmy did work on my first project. Nick was already around because um, we had already started talking about ideals. Yeah, well, you, you, wanted, you wanted to sign us, right? Well, this is before this is before I wanted to sign you. So um, you guys were already playing together. So right. David and I started putting everything together, we'll do that. And then um, Dave was like, yo, bro, I'm playing in this band, you should come check us out. So me and the big homie Scrib was like, all right, fuck it, let's go. And we went to the show and I meet Nick. And I tell the story on Young A's podcast as well. Um, and Nick's gone off with of 232s and Mickey's and the four of them fucking play the show and they kill it. And I was like, yeah, I want to sign y'all. And I was like, I'm gonna tell you straight up, I don't got no money to give you, but I, I know a bit about marketing and I, have faith in y'all, and I feel like I can get y'all in the right places. And, um, you know, band shit, women got in the way, oh, shit fell yes. apart. Yes. Oh, let's and then, yeah, well, let's, we don't have to talk Wait, about it. Was this at Musicians uh, Discount? <laughs> this was the one at Musicians okay. Discount, exactly. Was this our first, oh, no. <laughs> was this our first show or our second show? Um, oh, whichever one show. it was, to the, the, I think that was the last show y'all had, actually. The last show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the one where, um, where you guys were competing to win the money, so it had to be the last. Oh yeah, we got second, yeah. and then I got the crash symbol for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. that crash. Yeah. I love the crash. That's pretty, yeah, so um, that's pretty good second. So the band fell apart, but Nick would come over and smoke. So David is this still in the hood of my yeah, this is still in the hood. This is in the hood. Yeah, yeah, we're in the hood for a while. So okay. this is right. still in the hood. Oh, uh, my, my grandparents' house. Okay. Um, so they came over with a song, and it was, and it was like, "Yo, listen to this." And I heard him rap, and I was like, "Oh, okay, that's fire." I already knew he could rap. Because had, he had given me a song in 2020 uh, called Yatu Sabe. Yes. And I wrote a chorus for it. And after I wrote the chorus for it, I said to this fucker, I hate you still for not <laughs> doing this fucking song. I said to him, I said, bro, I said, this song isn't for me. I said, this song is for you. I said, write a verse in English and write a verse in Spanish. I don't even have that beat anymore, I don't think. This was in 2010, bitch. Of it's course probably like in the Gmails, maybe. Yeah, I don't but, know. I, but I, told him in, I told him in 2010 to do this, bro. And he just didn't do it, and it wasn't until, when did you write your first song in English and Spanish? English and Spanish? Yeah. Uh, what, when I dropped uh, the great EP, no? I think so. Yeah. That was like, what, 2018 maybe? Yep. Cause I mean, it's- So it took him eight years to listen to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish is my first language, but like rapping in Spanish, is, it comes a little tough for me, but it does come out nice and clean and it sounds, but it sounds genuine. It sounds so great. Yeah, yeah, so genuine. Yeah, that's what everybody tells me. But it may, it's harder for me to write it, but it sounds better. So it's good that it's hard for me because I'm concentrating on what I'm I saying, you that. know, so. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how I got to know everybody here. <laughs> what about you, Emmy? I think I already touched on how I'm everybody, right? Okay, yeah, we're yeah. good, we're good. All right, so um, my first question was what led y'all to getting into music? <laughs> I know that's tough. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I said, no, that's tough. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, I'm going to be real honest here. This, all the walls are down, all right? I was 12 years old, or no, I was 11, actually. And my dad told me that one of our friends, family friend's son, was trying to play the guitar so he can get some females. And I was like, well, I want females, you know? <laughs> and I feel like I can do this. Guitar doesn't so. seem that hard. So I started taking guitar lessons, and immediately the female thing went away, and I was like, wait, there's this thing called metal, and it was going, and I was like, this is exactly how I feel. And so I, I went and got an electric guitar, and it was it's a BC Rich Warlock. I, was got, I had to get it tatted. And after that, um, I got into uh, 
just just metal. I actually didn't listen to rap until till uh, late high school. It showed me Tech Nine, I think it was. So, am I up next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're actually into music. Okay, so it it started sixth grade. I didn't even. It wasn't even my idea. It was actually my mom's idea. Rest okay. in peace, mom. Rest in peace to her. Rest in peace. Um, she, I was in home ec. That was one of my electives in sixth grade. You trying to get the bitches? Fuck up. The high effort class what? home ec. What middle school? Trying to get the women, bro. Southwood. You went to Southwood, bro. bro. Yeah, dude. The three of y'all did. <laughs> bro, dude. Okay, so I was in home ec, and my mom's like, no, absolutely not. So she went to the school. Why? She, she don't want you getting bitches, bro. I guess not. Sorry, let me no, stop calling the no. bitches. She don't want you getting ladies. M- Miss Pat wouldn't, wouldn't play with that. No. No, she wasn't, she wasn't about that life. Oh, mm. damn. Yeah, but it's okay, though. Because yeah. you know what? If it weren't for my mom, I wouldn't be here right now. That's real. Yeah. So she went to the school, of course. You know, my mom loved uh, to raise hell. <laughs> she loved to raise hell. Oh, mom, Karen. God damn it, I miss you. <laughs> loved to raise hell. And so she did. Next thing I know, she got me a transfer from home ec to orchestra. So the first Damn, not even regular band, straight to orchestra? Straight to orchestra. Okay. So the first day I walked in, I walked up to Dr. Mecklefresh. I don't know if you ever heard that name before. Yeah, yeah. Harry Potter. Harry Potter here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Gaudium Leviosa, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I walked in, and I walked up to Dr. Mecklefresh, and I gave him the transcript. I was like, yo, I'm transferring here from Home A. Right. And he's like, hold up your hand. So I hold up my hand just like that to his. And he goes, you're on base. This nigga really sword and hatted you. <laughs> 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 Yo, for real. <laughs> he hit you with the sword and hat. He, he hit said, me with the sword and hat. Wow. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Sword so then hat. I went on to, to double base, and there was two guys there who, of course, made fun of me. I was a little scrub, you know, a little bitch, because I didn't, I'd never played an instrument in my life. And, you know, they were on their high hats, or right. high hats, or high stools, whatever the fuck you want to call yeah. them. Thank you, dude. For the high cheers. Days. <laughs> Thank you. And um, they didn't, they just kept on making fun of me. One of them was, um, what was his name? I mentioned it in a song. Machado. I think his name was Michael Machado. Big Mike? No. Big fat Mike. Big Mike. Oh, that, wow. He was in orchestra? No, no that can't be Michael no. Machado. Yes. I don't know. Michael no, Machado. No, 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 no. I don't Machado. think so. Michael Machado. He was a bass player back in sixth grade. Oh, right Lord. Bass. Maybe. That didn't last long. Uh, yeah, he kept on making fun <laughs> of me. And I was like, why are you making fun of me? you like, bigger than me, though. <laughs> but then, yeah, that was how I started to get into music. And then, of course, I wanted to do guitar and bass and all that. My mom was like, no, 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 no. You got to be on the classic, the upright bass. And I was like, all right, fine. I didn't get introduced to electric bass or guitar until I met this fool over here. All right, yes, so sir. when does the metal start? Because ninth grade, ninth you, grade. Had, you had metal shirts already. Nine. Okay, I started listening to metal in eighth grade. Okay. I All could right. tell you the incident. A little emo story if you want to hear okay, it. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. All right, we got time. So <laughs> I had a I have a friend, had have I haven't spoken to her in years. Alyssa Samuels. Oh man. Shout outs to Alyssa Samuels. Yeah, shout outs to Alyssa Samuels. I know I don't get in contact Samuels, with you, but shout outs to that's Alyssa. The homie. Samos. That's right. Right? Yes, sir. So I used to hang out with Alyssa or Samos in, in lunch. In middle school, I had no friends except for Alyssa or Samos. And one day, she was sick. I was like, all right, cool. Let me just sit at the same table that you sat at all the time with your friends. And I sat there, and then her one friend turned to me and goes, you know, we only talk to you because you're Alyssa's friend. We really don't like you. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh. Kids are mean as fuck. Yo, for real. Middle school sucked for me. So I was like, okay, that's cool. And I remember... Now we're going back to John Hatfield and John Fenton. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> John Fenton especially. <laughs> John Fenton. Because they were always listening to metal, and they had metal shirts and shit. Okay. So I went to go hang out with them one day, and then I got introduced to Slipknot. Sheesh. This First thing? This is Southwood, eighth grade. So then I heard Slipknot, and I was like, wow, this is, like Palmer said, this is how I fucking feel. So I went to Hot Topic, started buying Slipknot t-shirts <laughs> and shit. Hot Topic in the Falls? Hot Topic at the Falls. <laughs> Depressed about that FCAT training class. Hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you still on that? <laughs> I forgot. 
was like, I forgot it was it FCAT training. I, I forgot the name of that class, but no, it was yeah, literally bitches are reading. <laughs> no, yeah, no, intensive was, reading no, or something. No, no, there was a, there was a name for it, remedial math. Was uh, it okay? Oh, yeah, that was in math. Okay, which was a nice way of saying retard. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah you know remedial I mean resource. <laughs> Resource deficient. In the buggy, you had no, no <laughs> one else in your room. That's what, that's what we all met Tay Tay at. Tay Tay? Yeah. R.I.P. Tay Tay. Even <laughs> Angles have those wings. Tay Tay stories we had at your crib, though. Bruh. Oh, Tay Tay on top of the gas Over-deal. station. <laughs> you Over-deal. Over-deal. Oh, my God. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah. So I got introduced to Slipknot by a couple of Slipknot shirts from there. And then that's when, um, what was his name? Etheridge was his last name. I started hanging around him and Kim Wellbaum. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, eighth hey, grade. Come on, hey, you know the rules. All and right, they introduced me along. to the dark side. <laughs> and once I got a, a taste of that dark side, I didn't want to go back. Heard. I didn't want to go back. And then, yeah, and then pretty much once I started listening to all the metal and shit that they introduced me to, my old friends from elementary, like Alyssa, James Powers, Stephen Leatherman, all of them people just did not like the vibe I was giving off. Shout out to Sandra, since you said Steven. Shout yeah. out to Leatherman. Shout uh, out to the Leathermans. Shout out yeah. to Leathermans. But, uh, and then, yeah, that's how I got into it. I, can, can, can I tell a very, very, very fast story? Go ahead. My, the, the moment that I knew that I was going to be friends with Nikki forever was, <clears throat> so, y'all remember, if y'all went to Southwood, something happened. And so that thing that happened. Well, I didn't go to Southwood, but I remember. I was supposed to go to Southwood. Something Southwood. happened. Yeah, yeah, I remember Something that. happened. Google we don't got to talk about it. Yeah, oh, Google yeah. it. Yeah. Google it. Um, and I remember and that everybody was supposed to wear now. white, but <laughs> <laughs> what? They were but I was hold on, hold on. Everyone was supposed Yo, to wear I white. About, okay, I'm sorry. Everybody was supposed to wear white, and I remember going out to the field, and I saw Nikki and John Hatfield wearing black shirts, and they were the only <laughs> ones in a, a field of white. <laughs> everybody was wearing Yo. white. Nobody forgot except them. And oh, I they didn't forget, bro. Y'all didn't did forget. it on purpose. No, y'all did yeah, it on purpose. Forget. Y'all did do it on purpose. And I was like, man, that's so disrespectful. And then after I walked away, I'm like, actually, no, it's not. It's actually pretty funny. You know? I was like, that's <laughs> actually kind of hysterical. And that's when I tried to become your friend again because I was like, you know what? I- I'm being a simp right now. Like, I'm, I'm being just Well, you've been that. You were that for a lie. while. When you approached me, so. I was like, I don't know if I want to be your friend because you were wearing those him shirts. Oh, yeah. Man. Is it what personal? shirts? Hey, him. shut up. His Infernal Majesty? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had yeah. the, I, I had the, I had the fishnets on and the and whole the deal. Fishnets oh, and man. the fishnets and the pink. Oh, but yeah. it's all right, though. Oh, uh, it was cringy. Forgive and forget or something. That's all right, yeah, Did yeah, you wear yeah. the big-ass pants? No, yeah. I didn't, actually. No. I wore, yeah, you did. I wore the, I wore the, the huggers, you know? Yeah, yeah, but I wore the huggers, though. I wore the, oh, yeah, you did the wear the huggers. The tights, yeah, the tighty whities oh, Showing God. off that. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move along with this. <laughs> Dude, what got you into music, bro? Uh, I, did you start with drumming? No, I mean, uh, I started, really, it was my cousin. I would watch uh, my cousin, Hector. He would perform. Uh, he was in Southridge marching band. Okay. So as a kid, I would go to the shows and watch him, like, marching and playing and the drum line and all that shit. It's like, that's pretty cool. Got into Metallica like around fifth grade. I don't know. You know, it was just music, art, which is always something in my life. Yeah, you, so you did so all the arts. You did dancing really, all Yeah, so. I did dancing. So it was just a natural, it just felt natural. Plus your so dad. My dad plays saxophone. Yeah. My mom's a dancer. It just, it just fell where, you know, this, it was p- sp- supposed to happen. I feel like, that. You know, yeah. So it's nice and easy. You know, I feel nothing that. crazy. Maybe. Yeah. For me, um, I fell in love with music early. Like elementary school, I was um, in in what would be the equivalent of like elementary band. I wanted to play cello. I never got to. And that kind of pissed me off. But um, I would go to like the ballets and um, the different like orchestras and stuff like that. And then um, when I got to middle school, I started band, and I wanted to play saxophone because I was like Kenny G gets all the women. Shout out to Kenny G. Shout out to Kenny G. <laughs> I was like, I want to get all the women. I want to play saxophone. And uh, the band teacher, Mr. Bruton, shout out to Mr. Bruton, was like, your embouchure would be good for baritone. And I was like, all right. That dude was weird. He was talking about your lips. I mean, he, he had to talk about all, of, all the kids' <laughs> lips, bro. That's, that was his job. Why are you looking at my lips, dude? <laughs> <laughs> no, Diddy. <laughs> uh, but uh, I started playing baritone. And then... um. 
I ended up transferring from sixth grade school down south to uh, to Richmond, and um, they had baritone, but they also had tuba. They had no tuba player, so I started learning how to play uh, tuba along with playing baritone. And I actually loved it at Richmond because we had a marching band in middle school, oh, full shit. uniforms. We were like playing in the Homestead Parade during um when they have the the rodeo during the rodeo, and we'll do, yeah during the rodeo, and we'll do um like the Junior Orange Bowl and stuff like that. Oh, so shit. that was fun. And I got the um, I got the Palmetto, and Mr. Smith was like, we're playing James Bond. And I was like, no, the fuck I'm not. <laughs> you guys got to play it right. <laughs> He's like, we're doing James Bond. And it was like, we're doing, what was it, the Matador? Oh, yeah, and I yeah, was yeah. Like, I was like, fuck the Matador, bro. I was hey, like, but rest in peace, Mr. Smith. Rest, rest in peace to him. He, he was actually a really good band teacher. Loved him. I just didn't fuck with the music. I was like, bro, I'm checked out. I'm not doing and this. And he always hit the... Gotta, yeah, he did. <laughs> gotta be on top of it, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at that same time, I, I had really started like rapping like heavily. I, I wrote my first song in uh, in eighth grade, and it was a diss song to, to, these, to these bitch niggas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, it's funny because I, I wrote it and I uh, let my homeboy Blake read it. I just spoke to Blake that day. Shout out to Blake and Blake. By the, t- by the end of the school day, like 30 people had read this fucking song. And it's like, bro, you're good as fuck. And I was like, okay, so this is a thing now. <laughs> you feel me? And then I got to, uh, I got to high school and I started like having like ciphers and shit. And, oh. and I, um, I practiced freestyling every day after school by listening to 99 Jams at 5 o'clock and freestyling to every song that came on the radio. So this is like when Rick Ross Hustle was coming out. So I would freestyle to Hustling, I'm a D-boy by Lil Wayne, whatever the hell got played on the radio. I write my own verse to it. What about you, Emmy? Uh, yeah, I started, uh, actually I came into the music thing making beats back in like when I was uh, a, a senior, like in the beginning, like at the, towards the tail end of my junior year, but more like my senior year. Uh, Cause uh, I, ha- I had a friend back then, uh, an acquaintance that I knew, his name was Chris Ramirez. Right. He used to go by C-Ram, uh, right. C-Ram Beats. I don't know where he's at right now, I, don't, I really don't care. So. <laughs> Like, he put me on how to make beats at FL Studios, and then he used to bring beats around, and I used to, you know, I had a knack for it. I didn't know I had a knack for it, and so he started making, I started, start, I, until I started hearing beats. And then in my head, I was writing rhymes, I was like, okay, I could, I could, I could fuck with this, I could do this, you right. know? And then I started making it into beats, and then, but, you know, the whole thing with him, I don't know, but he put me on... On the on the game with FL Studios, I think it was like six at the time? Or FL, Some, something you know? around there. That's actually who... Um, who told me that Emmy was making beats because he was trying to uh, get some beats to me and I, I had like two that I was feeling and he was just annoying with it. He was like, bro, did you write to the beat yet? And I was like, bro, like when I'm done with the song, I'll send it to you. And I think I had like uh, did a song called Tell a Story to beat the Emmy sent me first and he was like throwing a hissy fit because uh, Emmy's beat got yeah, used he, before he had a Yeah, so. <laughs> he had that type of attitude so he was uh, always trying to one-up me and then he was trying to like, he wanted to be better, you know? But he was, you know, whatever. Yes. Yeah, that was, that was in the past, you know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever it was. And then I started uh, making songs. And then I, at first, I was a producer. I was making beats, True. which I want to get back into. But we'll talk about that later, I'm sure. Yeah. And then I started making songs, and it just came to me fairly easy. And I was writing, I was writing rhymes, and it just it became like that back in high school, and I'm still doing it to today. For sure. So four of us played instruments. So my next question is, uh, do you feel like learning instruments helped you with uh, creating music later on in life? I mean, it's everything. I mean, for, for me, uh, it's not a fair, it's not a fair question for me. That's all I do. But I mean, it's not all you do, but it, on, it started what you do. Yeah, so, honestly, yeah. I honestly, I think what rev- really revolutionized everything for me was a year after I started playing guitar, I started playing bass. Right. In my, in, in my dad's dad rock Christian slash classic <laughs> rock thing. Yeah. Um, I watched this guy. His name was Troy. Are you talking about The Way? Yeah, the, the Way. Oh and then we were the Sons God. of Thunder. And there was a bunch of... The Sons of who? Sons of Thunder. Oh, Sons of Thunder. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But there was this guy. So, so he was a bass player in a band in the 90s called Kinetic Descent. His name was Troy. Uh, shout out to Troy. You probably will never watch this old man. <laughs> but um, I watched him play bass. I actually never touched a bass before I... I played bass, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, and he wanted out because he's like, I just want to be a painter. I don't want to, like, this is sacrilegious. I grew up in a cult. Long story. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I grabbed the bass, 
And immediately when I touched it, there was like this complete, like I was not a guitar player. I still am not a guitar player. Um, but it changed everything. It made it so that I could express every single little thing that I was thinking. As a matter of fact, 100% of the beats that I've done for y'all in the past always start on the bass guitar. 100% of That's them. That's believable. Even, even if, it's, if it's mentally not necessarily under my fingers, it yeah. always starts on bass. And, and so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. What about you, bro? Yeah, it's definitely helped. I mean, come on. I mean, I started on bass, yeah, upright bass, and went to bass guitar. Then I went to electric guitar mm -hmm. because I was trying to do a band with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need to say the name. Right. This guy's laughing over here. Red light and crash. What, yeah, red <laughs> light. What was Ashes at Dawn? Ashes at Dawn first, and then it became Red Light, Red Light Crash when we were like, we are red not light, red making. Red Light, Red Light Crash was way better than Ashes at Dawn. Oh, we are not making a native band. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, and then after that, I've always wanted to be a drummer. Like, I've always loved drums. I wish I could have started on drums first, but I never did. My mom did not like drums. I don't know why. Because they're loud? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Even after high school, when it, or like, 11th grade when I got a drum set, my yeah. mom hated when I fucking was drumming. So I always had to do it when I was home alone. Mm. And uh, I feel like because I started on bass and went to drums, it helped me with rapping, you know, with the, the rhythm and all that. I feel that. So and I feel like that's why I caught on so goddamn quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you do that? What's the question? Do you, uh, do you think that playing instruments helped you and with everything else that you've done musically, like from when you were rapping, I mean, it doesn't hurt. That's for sure. For sure. But it's not necessary, either. No, it's not necessary. No, it's just a few. No, I mean, but look at Emmy. He didn't start on an instrument. He's fucking fire. I no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's why I, I play no instruments. <laughs> I think the one thing that with music, I don't know if it's music that brought this or who I am. That when David and I recently have been writing songs. I can just pick out certain parts and just like change it a little bit. Yeah. And then I think David agrees that it improves oh, it. Oh, the last song we dropped was. Right. It would be nothing without all the contributions. So you made. I don't know if that's because of playing an instrument. I don't know if that's because of just who I am. But yeah, I don't know. For sure. A hundred percent. I feel like drums doesn't hurt. Yeah. I definitely you know. feel like uh, my my time. Playing instruments did help with being an artist because it gave me um, just the just the idea to try other things outside of what would be like my norm. Like I'm not just like, oh, let me get a trap beat. I rap on some shit that sounds like it should be played at the EDM festival. But my That's an idea. I mean, we we've, we've done songs like that. Let's do it. I actually just and found we have recently. done songs. Yeah. Yeah. The, the song will be done tonight. You better hurry up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So I feel like I feel like it has been helpful in a way. But even Emmy, Emmy didn't play an actual instrument, but he started with making beats. So there was that element of instrumentation. Yeah, and I was yeah, playing I was playing with the sounds. I had no like clue of what the keynotes were. And then when I met Palmer back in, yeah, like twenty sixteen like, or something. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he started like my, my beats were like terrible. They weren't After mixed for anything, <laughs> but they were still good. And I was just playing everything by ear. I was just making pushing buttons and oh, this sounds good. And you've wrote to us a couple songs, yeah. so they were not, you know, terrible, but, you know. Huh. I feel that. Um, do any of you remember the first song that you wrote? Oh, man. The, the very first one I wrote. Oh, shit. I feel like it's harder. Hold for on. That's a, that's a qualifying question, right? What, what do you mean? Like the first song that was completely the put together? The first rap song that you wrote, do you remember? The rap? First yeah, rap let's, one? Let's go rap because you do it. Oh, shit. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not forget his rap name. Yeah, oh. Mossberg Heroin. Mossberg Heroin. <laughs> well, that, was the, that wasn't his first name. That, oh, what was yeah. the first one? Yeah. What was the first name? I don't remember your first name. Me neither. Well, you I were doing Genocide Tron at first when I was, we first started rapping. Yeah, I was always yeah. Gen Genocide Tron. You, you did Mossberg Heroin after you met Crack. Sure. M actually, but that's what we okay, I do Peter. remember the first rap song that, that, <laughs> that I wrote, but we're not allowed to talk about that. Okay. So I'll go with the second one. Was Henry's or Peter? Mm -mm. You don't want to know. <laughs> this one was not good. Was it around Drop, is, Drop on My Drapes Days? Or? Yeah, it was what before that. It was the first one. Yes. No, thought, it wasn't. There was Papa one before C? that, dude. No, 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 no. The Blender one? 
the I know what you're saying. Okay, are you sure we didn't write that one first? I'm pretty sure dra Drapping by My Drapes okay. is first. Okay, Drapping by My Drapes, check it out on Spotify. Uh, <laughs> same country, that was the drapping first one we ever wrote. Drapes. It, do not do that. Yeah. <laughs> or do Man, it. I fucked with Dropping by My Drapes. It, I mean, I that, was the mad. chorus was great. For it. Everything yeah. else was awful, but the chorus that was like the best song. It, actually, that, era, I will yeah. say the remix goes way harder than the actual, and it's on the same album, so just skip the original and go to the remix. <laughs> Sir Nixon. I mean, we've already. Yeah, you had know this yours. You know yours for sure. My what about my first one? You know your first rap song for sure. No, because I, I mean, it's solo rap song, yeah. But I thought we were talking about first, like, rap. Yeah. First rap you ever wrote. That was the smoking song that I wrote with Emmy at Palmer's house. Yeah, uh, that's what I said. Yeah. You know your first one. I don't one. remember that one. Oh, you don't I at don't all? I don't remember the title of it. Oh, wow. I think I have those lyrics in that really small book. Did you write, like, on the last page of that little tiny book? I Did think I write in your book? I think so. There's lyrics in like in the very last page of the like. Why would I write in your book? Though? I have no idea because you can't remember. My, I used to uh, record with Sanchez on that mic, that headset mic. What were and the you, lyrics? I don't know. I would have to find the book. <laughs> oh <laughs> but, wow. <laughs> but I used to like rap. Remember that microphone setup that I used to have? And you, you came over with Sanchez one time, and we did. I forgot what song. No, but no, the, but no. The first one I did was that Palmer song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was still a drummer. Technically, at that time. technically, the first one that we released. Was Not Bayou's wrote, Bitches was and Banjos. Bayou's Bitches and Banjos. Yeah. Yeah. That was technically was that the, the That was the first song I ever heard you on, yeah. From, yeah. yeah, from us, yeah. No, I'm talking about the smoking song, though, that I did. Because I was at Palmer's house when you went to go record. And then he's like, Nikki, you want to give a shot? And I was yeah. like, sure. And I wrote something. I don't remember. Do you remember the name? I, no, I spilled water all over we that We smoked a lot of weed back then. so I, I, I spilled water all like over that computer. All right. I I spilled water all over that computer at Emmy's house, high as fuck on Molly at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Crazy, that we bro. stood there in shock. Like, yeah. did you know, this really just happen? Message. We'll get oh, back to yeah. that in a bit. <laughs> do that. Do you remember your first rap song you ever wrote? I mean, I think it's Drapping by My Drapes. Yeah, it was Drapping by sure. My Drapes. Yeah. What about you, Emmy? Uh, I mean, the first rap, uh, me and C-Ram used to go back and, like, back and forth with each other, like just like dissing each other like for fun. But I don't think that counts. I mean, that I, counts. So maybe that was like my first rap song that I wrote. For sure. I used to record on a on a on a webcam with a camera and the beat right next to it, the the, the speaker. Yeah. It was terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible. I mean, you gotta start somewhere. Bro. Yeah, but that was my first one. Yeah. We were getting beats off like Soundwave.com or something, or I forgot that that. Oh lord. Like free beats, just random, random free beats. I forgot yeah. the name of that website. Now the first solo song, I forgot. Is that off my sway or was it swaying? One of those two. And then Probably I had, swaying. And then I did sway snap with this guy over here. Oh, that was fun. That was a good one. For sure. I wish we still had that. So I still um, got it. I can't find the theremin though. That's this the is a fun I got one. Beats for all three of them. Oh, then mine. Okay, we'll talk. So about it. we'll talk. What was the inspiration behind your name? Which name? Let's start with Which Broken name? Puss. Which name? Okay, Let's so start with Broken Puss, Puss, and I tell this story all the time. Stone Sour is Corey Taylor from Slipknot's offshoot. Um, and so he, so he wanted to, so, so the reason that they called it Stone Sour is they wanted to come up with the most nasty name they could that nobody would want to use. Right. And I'm like, huh, I can come up with something worse than that. And so I was like, all right, fuck it. Broken pus. So yeah. bro broken pus for y'all who aren't hip, it's a pimple. When, when you pop a pimple, the, the pus breaks through your skin. Broken right. pus. It's just pimple. But there was a band called Pimple, so I couldn't use pimple. Had to use broken pus. Okay. And then Genocidatron was, um, I, I heard a Buju Bantan song, and it sounded like he said, Genocidatron. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, shit. Okay. So that's where Genocidatron comes That's from. funny, because we just spoke about Buju, what, like a week ago? Yeah, are we going to go see him or what? Yeah, we, right. we should, bro. We, need we to. definitely should. Classic. Well, when I was in the band, Insane, uh, we are the, the vocalist. Was, his name was Nick as well. So uh, we always called him Metal Nick. And then we just called myself Nick. Yeah. And then one day he was just like, you know, I really don't like Metal Nick. Mm. Why can't I just be Nick? And why don't we just call you Nixon? So, uh, so Metal Nick gave you the Metal name. Nick gave me my Okay, I never knew that, actually. Yeah, yeah but yeah. see, Metal, that's, that's crazy, though, because yeah. I, I never called Metal Nick Metal Nick to his name, to his face, ever. No, but we always did in the band uh. when I was in there. Oh, I see. At okay. first, we were like, oh, yeah, well, well Nick, you can do this, Nick, you do, or something like that. And oh, then we, yeah, we'll yeah. always be like, which one? Which one? And we're all right, you're Metal Nick, and you'll just be Nick. I would love to be Metal David. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I wish somebody called me that. 
You're a metal god, though. Uh, no, no, you're the metal guru. Guru, I know. Oh, well, shout out. Listen, stream right now, Red, Red Viking. Red Viking. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, my, when I was making simple. beats, I used to go by too quick because I used to rap fast or I used to talk fast, I, I would say more or less. And then I used, used to. I, Typical yeah. Dominican. <laughs> I, I still rap fast, whatever. I yeah, used to, <laughs> but no, the name came because I, I talked fast between my friends. And then um, I used to hyphen it to 2QK, but I just nice. don't, I don't like that at all so whatsoever. Yeah, so I just neither. changed my name to my first and my middle name, which is Emmy Alexander. So it makes it, there's a lot of, you know, it you, makes you know, it easier. I can never remember your actual last name. I always have to look back Andujar. on my phone. To, I, yeah. yeah. That's not a typical Hispanic last name. Yes, they, I get a lot of, I get a lot of but, Arabic. But a lot of people say Andajar. And, and, and Levine. Like the, like yeah. the, uh, like the lawyer. <laughs> yeah, like the lawyer. Yeah. And yeah, and the John Levine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and Duhar. All right, Duhar. Tell them how you got the name Duhar. Which is one of my favorite stories, actually. <laughs> and Beretta. Both of them. Beretta. You, you got two interesting ass stories for all both right. your um, names. Beretta's easy. From the Beretta. Putting all the holes in your sweater. The money getter. Motherfuckers better know better. So yeah. Biggie. Give me the loot. We need to get this boy rapping again, dude. Uh, Such. <laughs> so that's where I got that. Uh, do that wasn't my choice. I don't. Uh, I, I know the story. Quest. I know do the that, story. Do that, do that, do that, that, that. No, 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 no. That's incorrect. That's what he told me originally. Okay, so Josh Wellens, fantastic jazz drummer, mm -hmm. would make fun of the way that do that would talk because mm -hmm. no one could really understand him. Back then, it was far worse. Today, you speak well and whatever, but in that time, he would, me to balloon do that. He was like, had the boom hour thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and so it, this guy was all like spastic, and he's like, you should be called do that, you know? And it just stuck ever since then, since freshman year. I always school. thought it was from the Tribe Called Quest. No, no, no. Because we had that conversation like years ago. I mean, I, it might be I, fun to think that I way. thought it was do that, because uh, every time he would, you guys would want to do something, he would be like, oh, do that. Let's do that. Well, that's, that's, you that's what I'm saying. It's anytime we would have a conversation, that's he the kind say, of accent yeah, okay, that he That's how I met. Yeah. Right. Church is church. Shout out to Josh Wellens. He's probably uh, a famous drummer. What's been drummer. the biggest obstacle in your music career? Wow. <laughs> it could be any genre uh, that you're working. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> what? Come on, bro. I, I already know what it is, though. I yeah. know what it is, too. All right, can I do my second biggest obstacle, and then we'll not talk about the first one? Fine. This is recorded and enshrined in reality. My second biggest obstacle, I, I would say, is um, keeping myself motivated this past year. It's been a very challenging... No, 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 I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Uh, keeping myself motivated this year to do a song a week with the video and okay, all that Okay, you bitch, stuff. since you just, like cut to that when I was going to ask you that later on. Okay, Let's but, get to but, that. So but, since you've been doing this 52 by 52, okay. which he's been releasing a song, a video, and a shirt every week, yeah. how have you kept yourself motivated in this time? Oh, I see. damn it. Okay, that's what <laughs> you, you were asshole. saying. You didn't know what the first one was. I thought you knew. I know what the oh. first one was, bro. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just don't want to say it on camera. Okay, no, no problem. Recording. Um, how have I kept myself motivated? Yes. And explain it's, to them the process of what you've been doing, because I think it's okay. interesting. So um, I was actually surprised when I came over to do No Offense to it, how quickly you were doing the process. So the, the original vision was, there's a lot of people in the music industry and musicians that say, I can't because I'm not inspired. I don't know how. I can't, I can't, I can't. And it was driving me crazy because I would hear it everywhere. There wasn't one a specific place. It's, you know, I would look at these big artists and they would say like, oh, it's just been so hard to be inspired. And I. I have always been somebody that can write a song in two seconds. I would write beats for you guys in like 55 seconds right. and be ready with it, you know? You would send us like 10 beats a day. Exactly. So we, would, we would sit down and make like four songs right. in the span of like two hours. Just like from, from like full, full inception, like a full conception from him starting with the bass. Right. And me sitting there writing as he's... As, as I'm making as he's it, yeah. Making it, yeah. So, so the, the idea was to say that inspiration, and I'm going to say this on camera for every single artist out there you're full of shit, you're a liar, stop pretending, and start working because inspiration is not real. It can happen, you can be inspired, but you're lying to yourself every time you don't write a song right there in that moment. Nothing in your life is too difficult. I am a single father with a full time job. At the Facts. time that we were doing this, I had a full-time band, and I still found a way to make a song, record all the vocals, all the instruments by myself, 
write it all myself, and put it out there with a video, and do that would make the t-shirts every single week for 52 weeks. You've had some help. 90% is you, but there's other people helping you. Absolutely, right, and right, I'll right. give the shout outs when the shout outs yeah, are due, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, but the idea of writing a song with the right people helping out is, it, 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 saying you can't do that is absolute fucking horse shit. And you're lazy and you're a little dumb for saying, I can't. I can't is an excuse. So, I wanna give a shout out to Recyclable Art Recyclable art. Me and him start. Me right. and him and Dudat started this project together. He's made every single video. The AI videos are un fucking believable. Phenomenal, bro. And 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 throughout this whole process, he's been challenged. You know, one of my best friends on this planet, and we see eye to eye. You know, I love everything that he does. He makes every single album cover, and, and Dudat made a lot of them too. You would just put them through the AI stuff, and so there, there's him. Um, I want to give a shout out to my girlfriend. I love her so much. Thank you so much for letting me scream in your closet for about a year. Um, mm -hmm. Mavic, I appreciate you. You know, um, I would do it sometimes at like 12 o'clock at night. I would be like, Rrr! and the neighbors wouldn't say anything. So also thank you to Mavic's neighbors. Um, and then more, more recently, Dudat's wife, Aileen, has joined and she's now the lead singer of Broken Puss. And um, she's really been able to take everything that She's I'm doing. She's been killing it too, oh, man. And, and let me just tell you something. At first, I really, you know, we had a bit of a, an issue. Um, and I'll say it right here on recorded live video, you know, another person that I consider one of, one of the, the best, the smartest, and funniest musicians I think I've ever worked with. And I never thought it would be the case. I thought she was just a piano teacher, but she's way more than that. Extremely talented. Um, and, 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 and kind of we're on the same page, which you would think like it's hard because I'm doing all this metal and crazy shit and whatever. And you wouldn't think that this, you know, nice, kind, soft-spoken girl would be into that kind of stuff, but she's taking it to the absolute next level. So shout out to Aileen. Um, but, but yeah, to stay motivated, to answer your question, to stay um, purposeful and consistent, the secret is to remind myself that it's necessary to remind myself that it must be done. There is no excuse and there's no break. Breaks don't exist for me. So I will say this, and I, I was talking to you on text about this yeah. right before. Um, we have a new band, it's called Oops. Um, it's like a cover band, but we're gonna do a lot of original music and I just wanna say here that our first album will be out in, on Halloween of 2024. Looking forward to it, because like I said, everything that you and Aileen have done over the last few weeks yeah. has been phenomenal, bro. She shocked the hell out of me, because I know Aileen Dude, yeah. as, as the piano player and the Disney lover. So to hear her like coming out with his music and like killing it, I'm like, all right, like I'm fucking with it. Well, and I also want to mention too, like the, the, the last song, go, go, go listen to it right now, even this, if this is years later or whatever that you're watching this. Uh, it's called Your Kaleidoscope, and it was really the first time since me and Dudat were like 17 years old where we sat and like really collaborated on a song. Like really everything was questioned, everything was pushed, and it came out to be, and, and dude, usually my songs are like five fucking minutes and yeah. they have 20 parts in them, but this one was like three minutes of just solid collaboration. You know, she came up with an amazing, amazing fucking chorus on the car on the way to a Kava bar, shout out to Vice City Kava. Um, she came up with the chorus right there, and I usually write lyrics in like 25 seconds, yeah. you know, just because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it or whatever, but just to go through the process before I, I get too long-winded about it, usually what would happen every single week is I would say to myself, on Monday, I'm gonna write this song. Um, and I would just come up with a loose concept, um, and I would sit down, grab my guitar, and write everything to drums. Um, right. And I would write out the drum parts, finish everything, I put the bass down, I would put the synthesizers, I would do all the different percussion stuff that's in the background, you probably can't hear because I mixed it badly. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I would do all that stuff and then I would go and record all the vocals, usually the same day. Um, and then after that point, I would send it to Recyclable Art and he would, um, I would give him a synopsis, this is what the song is about. And then he put together the AI video. But what I love about this record, which it's, it's, called, it's gonna be called 52, because it's the 50, you know, 52 songs or whatever. Um, there's only 12 songs on there, but the 50, yeah. it, it, look well, it up, because, it all makes sense. So every time he did 10 songs, he released it as a project. That's right. So this is right. the last 12 of the 52 songs. It, absolutely, and so, um, I don't know where I was going with this. 
Um, you got this. <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, I, you know, uh, this process, this, this album has been so much fun because I'll, I'll still write the song in 25 seconds. Yeah. But then <laughs> Aileen is a different type of musician because she will go to a piano and she will meticulously play every single note and make sure that she's singing. When I would sing stuff, I'd just off the rip. I'd just be like, all right, and I would, oh, whatever. And I would just kind of try to make it make sense. But this is, again, that's what really has taken this shit to the next level is that she's just like so meticulous about it. She remembers all the lyrics. We, mm-hmm. we recently performed at an open mic one of the songs and I could not remember a single lyric and she played the piano part and sang it all completely <laughs> without any lyrics in front of her or anything like that. So it's just been, it, it, it's been cool to see this point. But yeah. next year, I, I also want to say, well, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to release albums like normal people, but we will have singles that come out every month. So you'll always see something coming out from us. We're going to spend a lot more time on the music videos so that it looks like a nice production yeah, and all that sure. kind of stuff. And and uh, obviously want to collab with you guys again. Of and, course, of course. You know, once well, we just did something this year. That's right. That was, that was talk beautiful. About? So... Um, we have this thing called No Offense that we, we started in 2020, um, and it's, it's based around politics and our hatred of the way that they have us thinking that you have to you know, pick between the lesser of two evils. And it just so happens that it's the same people running again or, this or, year. Or it was. <laughs> well, well it, was, it was the same people running again this year than it was right. four years ago. So we did No Offense in 2020, and... Um, it was just about how these guys are like, they're old as fuck. They don't know what's good for us in reality because how can somebody who's in their 70s know what's good for people that are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, shit, right. even 50s, mm-hmm. when they're not from this generation? Right. So we did No Offense in 2020, and we were like, fuck, it's these same assholes again yeah. in 2024. Well, one dropped out now because like he couldn't even hold the fucking sentence together. Yeah, but we've been uh, known that since 2020. <laughs> so. But but we already released no, no offense two by then. Oh my god. <laughs> we might have to do a no offense three, right? Yeah. <laughs> I might have to go back in and. and uh, yeah, yeah. You gotta talk about the. Trump or Kamala? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cackle and Kamala. Yeah, but um, yeah. so that was the song that I did with him for uh for 52 by 52. Yeah. And I had a ball in uh recording it, bro. We literally shot everything. We literally, we literally recorded, shot the video, and got everything done within the span of an hour on a pouring rainy day in Miami. Oh and yeah, yeah. No, that, and, that, and again, that's the fun. concept, right? The, yeah, the, the and I, I love that because it reminded me of like 2012, where we would sit in that crib and just yeah. be on be on the timer, basically. Yeah, right. I remember. Yeah. Yo, it was you and me. Me and you used to do that a lot. Like yeah. used to, I used to go to your house a lot of time because I was at your house, and then he would come over and pick me up because he used to live like right down the street. And that cul-de-sac, yeah. Yeah. so you were nearby, and I would go over, and then I remember when I first got into the Camino gang, it was mm-hmm. doing the, the freestyle in your backyard. I think Andy Alvarez was there with you. Oh, yeah, but yeah. But you yeah. weren't there. I don't, know, I don't remember if you were there. Mm, I don't, I don't think, think so. Think no, was it was there, you no. and Andy Alvarez that recruited me. If I, if I, couldn't, if I knew how to freestyle or whatever, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, welcome to the Camino. Yeah, I think they were getting yeah. you ready to come to my house. to. to yeah, I yeah. think that was the same yeah. day. I was like, I saw them, and then we went down. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. But that's um, that's that's a really like I, I you know one of the things I was most excited to share up on this, and I don't want to take up too much more yeah. time. But the thing I, I really want to share, and you know, I hope that other artists watch this, and you know, we even have some guys in in our group right now that haven't released a song yet and all that. Right. Just remember that inspiration is up to you. You absolutely have no excuse for making anything. Make a shitty song. Uh, me and Duda talk about it all the time about Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton is a country artist and he writes thousands of songs a year and he'll release maybe a quarter or a sixteenth of that but he does it every single day Mm -hmm. and if you say I'm sorry but only every five years or every every three years or every one year I can release a song you're you're lying to yourself you're you're delusional I I definitely get that for sure and it's funny you saying that because me and Nixon were having a conversation similar to that recently because Nixon finished the Red Viking it's streaming on all digital platforms right now. Please go, check it, go check it out. Please, Please go, go check it out. Please go check it out. And um, while Nixon was was finishing the Red Viking, I was like, bro, you put a battery back in my bat. Like after after my dad passed, I was so the day before my dad passed, I was about to start season three of Free Lunch Fridays, shooting with Kilo. Like we already had a, the first video planned. Then my dad passed. It's like, bro, like I took off a year to 
become like to get used to being a, a dad and then it's like all right i had this plan on how to start doing music again and then i lose my dad so i'm like fuck i don't even want to touch music right now so i took off like basically another year but i was writing and everything i wrote in that time i felt like was great um and me and nixon were were, work, were working i um actually i got in the flu like early july and I hit Nixon, and I was like, bro, I don't give a fuck what you got to send me right now, send it. And I'm sending him back verses in like 15 minutes. Like, bro, Quick I just wrote this. Fuck. Beautiful. And he's like, bro, you just inspired the fuck out of me <laughs> off of David said the inspiration. I feel like you can inspire each other. But I get yeah. what you're saying with the new inspiration thing. Yeah. I'm like, bro, like, I just wrote this right now. And I was like, all right, I got this verse in LA, but I don't like it. So I'm going to rewrite this shit. And like, literally, all, every verse that I wrote for his project was written in like 15 minutes. C3PO or, or goes crazy. That shit is C3PO so hard. C3PO goes fucking I, so hard. So Nixon told all of us, I'm sending you guys this song. I got the first verse. Whoever has the best verse gets the second verse. That's not even And fair, I was though. like, okay, I know Emmy gonna come with that shit. I know Spaz gonna come with that shit. Spaz didn't get to lay his because he um he had moved away, but I was like, I'm killing both of you niggas. <laughs> <laughs> no, facts, though. You did, though. You that was my mentality. I was like, I'm killing both of you niggas. I was like, bro, I'm going to make y'all know y'all not getting this verse. And that was my mentality right in that shit. Well, talking about, about, about difficult, uh, <laughs> difficult circumstances to write a verse, I want to yeah. give a shout out to Emmy. I gave him the weirdest fucking song I could find but he did his in thing my arsenal. It, Actually, I think I made it right in front of you, if, I don't, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, what song? Uh, the song you did for hobble. 52 or 52. Oh, the, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I wrote to that the same day you sent it to me. That's like I was, right. I was walking into work, and I wrote the verse to that like in 30 minutes. Yeah. Right? I was, I was texting you. I was like, I'm walking, I'm writing to it, and I was done with it. Yeah, so 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 that that speed and that ability to adapt and starring in those little, you know, yeah. in, in those No, nah, that was fun to tell to watch, not going to lie. Oh, they yeah. did like these little skits making it seem like he was going crazy. He is crazy, <laughs> yeah. but. Yeah. No, the, 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 book, the book is still Bad around. Y'all got to Y'all got to stay tuned. In two weeks, the um, the final song, 52, the last song is, is coming out. I think that's what we're going to call it. I don't know yet, but um, that when that song comes out, if y'all have been following, I know Crack's been following the storyline, yes, um, but if y'all been following it, you'll see kind of uh, the, the, the resolve and what the story was all about in the first place. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's funny. So I was going to ask, us being a collective, what have you guys learned from each other? I think I think pretty I think pretty generally that I think I've learned about my humanity from you guys. You know, I and and we can just touch on it very lightly, but I went through a very serious drug problem and uh when I was with my ex-wife and um I learned about my humanity. I always thought I was invincible, but you guys have always like humbled me as a musician, especially do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, humbled me and kept me accountable and you know really said, is that really the best that you got? And I, I think that that mentality is what makes us next level. You know, I know we're not yeah. where we want to be, but, you know, I, I think that we're going to get there really fast with that thought process. No, for sure. Well, honestly, the last, uh, I can't think of it right now. What's the name? The, not the last podcast that Crack and I did, yeah. we actually spoke about you and, I'm sorry, I mean, your drug problem with the pill. Yeah, we did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And how that, like, kind of like mess things up for a little bit. These damn Spanish people with their pill yeah, popping. Yeah, I was just, you know, I don't know what the fuck I was <laughs> on. And like how, like how pissed off we were because we love you guys. And oh, God. And shit affected both of y'all. Oh, yeah. Like, and it, it affected you guys so much that it affected us. Yeah. So Absolutely. we definitely, like. No, it's definitely good to see y'all, like, where you are now because oh, yeah. oh, that shit God, did yeah. take a toll on the group as, as a whole because it was to the point where we weren't even really chilling like that because, like now we're not chilling as much as we would because we're all grown ass men with our own lives. You got your father, I'm a father. Yeah. Nixon helps take care of his father. Dude that has, has a wife and he does multiple fucking things. Yeah. Emmy has a job and he has his things that he's going through. So it's like everybody has their things, but we can all hit each other anytime and have a conversation. But yeah. before, like we were fucking, realistically, we were fucking broke college students for the most part. And we had yep. and we had all the fucking time in the world, so like yeah, back in yeah back then. But like at the end of the day, it's all love. Everybody goes nothing. through everything, so you yeah. know you gotta respect people, give them their space, and it's all love at the end. 
You know, oh, everybody God. needs that space and whatever it is. But I, I really oh, needed uh, that. I really needed that. To be on top of that. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, don't, I don't receive love like, and this is getting a little too deep and weird, but no, I don't. Get deep. No, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, it's no, not. no, no, no. We're I, a family, I, so I don't. Gotta get deep. I don't receive love in the way that a normal person would receive love. So like, I need somebody to, to say, "Dude, you're fucking up." Like, I need somebody to look at me straight in the eye and say, "What the fuck are you doing?" No, oh, God. You know what I mean? And 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 really, I got a lot of that during that time period. And and really, one of my big anti-drug moments where I finally was able to break. The every single day doing it is when we did the song No Molly. Yeah. Like that was a big moment for me. I sh I showed that song um, at rehab when I was in the outpatient in South Miami, and and, and people were like, "Damn, like you really about to drop drugs?" And mm -hmm. and from that point on, yeah, I still relapsed a couple of times, but that was yeah, the that's, beginning that's of the end of that goes. period. For me, it was that one night that you and your ex picked me up from my house, and you guys were fucked up on Molly. Yeah, and like. I didn't know you guys had taken like that, and I think shrooms. Yeah, it was guys, Molly and shrooms. They and drove to my house. And you guys were driving me to Crack's house. Oh, shit. And if I, if I had known that you guys were fucked up on that shit, I wouldn't have accepted the ride. Right. But the fact that you did, that was the one moment I knew that that shit that you were doing pissed me the fuck off. Oh, yeah. And I did not want to be around you anymore until oh, you yeah. got off that shit. No, oh, God. Like, what? Crazy. No, it was just they were they were bro they were gone like they it, were was, gone. Yeah. it was just the it fact was not that they were a great night. Space cadets, we got the cracks out and they were just like. Eh. Okay. Uh, it was literally yeah. like, I'm like me. I was in a car with these motherfuckers uh, yeah. driving. Like I could have lost my life. But you got there. <laughs> no, he got there, but barely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yes, I did get there. Did you die? Wait, wait. <laughs> there was a couple swerving moments. Oh yeah, yeah, man. and I didn't find out until we were well down like oh, 184 yeah. franchise. No, it could have been worse. Yeah. It could have been worse. Thank God it wasn't. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but it doesn't even matter because, like, no, no. at the end of the day, right. Camino game is family. Right. It's, it's just all love. That's right. Well, woo -woo. next thing I want to touch on is, so Nixon just dropped the red bike, and like I said, bro, what do you have next as far as, like, videos and things of that sort? What you got As far as what I have next, I have, because I did – what I did, season three, Throwaway Thursday, the yeah. therapy session with Kilo. Fire. He, he Go check that out on YouTube. Cool. Fire as hell. Topic is, you know, it is what it is, but yeah. And uh, Kilo says he, he owes me one video because yeah. of what we did with therapy session. And I haven't decided. I think because of how hard it is, mm -hmm. I want to do C3PO. If you want to, I'm with it. I'm just trying to figure out a concept for the video. Gotcha. But then after after all that, you know, Crack and I, we got that Coffee Break EP coming yes, out in sir. October. Five tracks, no hooks, just us venting about that one stupid nine to five that we have called Bitch -ass Company. <laughs> fucking fuck them. And you can, you can ask Emmy, it has changed us for the oh, worse. God. Nick the was worse. never this bad, so like this, yeah, that job, like Jesus. Has broke, I don't know about Crack, but it has broken me down. It hasn't broken me, but it definitely gets me pissed off as fuck. No, it's broken a me lot. down. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Yeah, just. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of. <laughs> bullshit. It's a lot of corporate bullshit, <laughs> and I'm like, y'all know, bro. I started my first business at 20 years old, so I see things differently than than people that never owned a business. So hearing some of these managers, well, not even managers, like hearing the shit that the upper management would say, I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. You sit behind the desk, dog. Don't tell me shit. Like, oh, they're, they're no, for certain, real, they're not in the front lines yeah. like you and I if are. If you're not in the fields, don't, don't tell me and shit. And it's like it, the, the managers nowadays, the rules have gotten different. Like the managers don't get in trouble anymore. Like if something goes on in the store, the, the upper management asks the managers, okay, what's going on with the supervisors? How right. come the supervisors can't yeah. manage your oh, wow. team? Yeah, and it's like, bro, you hire fucking children. That's a fact. For us to fucking manage. It's like I'm babysitting for eight hours these little kids that don't need to worry about their nine to five because mommy and daddy are paying Cover for fucking everything. everything. Mm -hmm. And then I have to go home and baby my fucking father and my sister who's got Down syndrome. I love them to fucking death, but I got to baby them too. No, so I'm babying 24-7. Yeah. And it's driving me crazy. It's I driving me to alcoholism. No, legit, I was just having a, um, a conversation with one of my coworkers the other day, me and him have been talking about um, a clothing company that, um, y'all know, I've been, I've been talking about Das Reefers forever. And um, he was like, bro, like, I really feel like you could push this shit 
And he was like, bro, like, we need to sit down and have a conversation because I'm tired of this place. And I was like, I get where you're coming from because I told myself I have until January 1st. So You've had a lot of conversations like that, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, I have. I <laughs> yeah. have. People feel they can come to you for that kind of no, conversation. No, definitely, bro. Yeah. Not, and I, res- I, appreciate, I appreciate everyone who feels that way, like, yeah. trusting in me that much. Um, Emmy, bro, you released Invitada this year. Yeah, I released a single called Invitada. It's, uh, and I'm working Invitada. on a s- Invitada. <laughs> so. And I wanted to ask you, like, you, you already kind of touched on it already, but um, how much harder was it for you writing that song and the other Spanish songs that you've been working on compared to when you write songs with us and you, like, mix it up, doing Spanglish, you're doing English? Does it take you longer because you have to just like sit down and figure out how to say it all in Spanish? Yeah, in a way. Like, there's, a lot, there's a lot more words that rhyme in Spanish, but it, for me, for some reason, it's like I find it more difficult to write in Spanish, even though it's like my first language, but it comes out good. Everybody that hears it, it's like, no, even it Nick. It comes out great. Yeah, it sounds authentic. I have no idea well, what the fuck you're saying, sounds, but I prefer that shit. Yeah, yeah so like, it's harder for me, but it sounds better because I'm actually there focusing because all my English stuff, like my, my English album is called Silly with Syllables. It's complete nonsense of same rhyming syllable words. It sounds nice, but it has like absolutely no concept except that I'm, it's fun. It sounds fun. Right. And this Spanish project called Tamangueto is pretty much what every other, every other dembo reggaeton song is. It's like, oh, you know, I, I'm... I'm better than you, or I'll fuck my ex, or you know, it's pretty much that same Just concept. Just toxic behavior. Yeah, you know, being toxic that. behavior. Yeah. You know, like I don't want to be with you. Like we had a good time, but you no, know, what everybody else talks about. Yeah, it's it's fun. But I bring fun my music. own spice because I'm Dominican. Yeah, I don't, I'm not. I don't. Tigre. I'm, yeah, you know, yo soy uno, uno de esos. So. <laughs> <laughs> de lo mío, que lo que. So I bring that spice. I, as far as I know, I don't know of many. I mean, I know like Mosa La Para and Toxic Crow and all those people from El, El Alfa, but El Alfa makes like tiki tiki music, yeah. you know? So, <laughs> so it's just like club and girls shaking their ass, yeah, that music. That. And I have one song like that on my on this project, and then I'm probably never gonna do a song like that, unless like I'm on a feature or something like that. But yeah. like I said, my Spanish stuff it sounds more genuine, so it, it makes me write actual concepts, I, I guess. You know? So it yeah, makes me stay on topic. I definitely feel yeah. that. All right, um, hold on, hold on one second. I know that you. Communal Corner is all yours and whatnot, but yeah. I gotta ask a question. Go ahead, bro. I've gotten both y'all motherfuckers on an album. When I just sent you something. Yeah. When are y'all gonna feature me I mean, me I on have it? you on a song, but we're gonna, you y'all gonna release it, though. Well, I told you. Well, you know my game plan. I, um, My goal is to put out Free Lunch this year, and then I'm dropping um The Road Less Traveled next year, right. which has the song that I sent you. All I right. can't wait to see I'm what you did to that. that I'm a little salty because <laughs> nah, I've been, you can't be I've salty with me, gang. I've been giving you some of my best fucking verses. And I, I have, feel you. I forget about well, it. You, he actually gave me my favorite verse from him for the project that I'm releasing this year. Um, we were actually just listening to it on the way here, and I can't wait to release that because I feel like everybody's gonna fuck with your verse as much as I fuck with your verse. Because, bro, I don't, I don't know if it was coming after me or coming after Emmy that made you start like that, but. <laughs> 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 Have I heard the song? I don't. Yeah, bro. Some uh, was that, was that the yeah, some ninety-seven. His verse from ninety-seven. Oh, ni- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. All right. True, true, true. I don't know who I was coming. That motherfucker said, "I'm bipolar." Tell me which one is my better half. <laughs> and I heard that. I don't even think I was there when you recorded your verse, bro. No, I don't. You I don't think I was. No, I think Emmy. Yeah, I've been. Think it was just you and Emmy. Uh, pretty much. But yeah. I got that, and I was like, "This motherfucker snap." <laughs> so I can't wait to release that. And shoot the video I would love to have a, a another Nikki on a on a metal song type vibe. If you know. Have you ever had on a metal song? Though? No, that would be fantastic, though. I would love that. I mean, yeah. you still got. Two I mean, weeks, it's right? something. I know it's something that you've you've fought back against a little bit. A little. But bit. you did you did Men's Chess Club, and you did a great job but on that. I don't even talk about Men's Chess. Club. If you've never heard the Men's Chess Club project, <laughs> please go listen to the Men's Chess Club project. Yeah. Was, Speaking of that, yeah. when are we doing Men's Chess Club Part Two? Well, because, bro. Uh, t- so, yeah, so the idea, fun. the idea is while I'm doing Oops Records this mm-hmm. year, um, I'm actually, sadly, I'm going to be taking a break from Broken Puss music. Okay. Just, I need to. It needs to breathe. It needs to take a nap. I discussed with your wife this today that it needs to take a nap, yeah. so we can do Oops stuff. But understandable. 
But I, I can say it right now with great confidence that we can do another Men's Chess Club record. Uh, I would love to. On or before 2025. I'm, I'm down with it, you know? I'm still mad we didn't shoot the video for I Ran Away. Like, oh, I still have that shirt. Yo, it's still hanging in the closet. It's I so still have my shirt. It's fucking dusty. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, but, I... I mean, listen, at the end of the day... You pushed me to write one of my favorite verses I've ever wrote. And... My son wasn't even born yet when I wrote that song. He's three yeah. now, so yeah, like. Well, I, the 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 thing that I would love to do though is you know that left was, my son left was already on uh, on some of my broken plus songs. We yes. need to do we need to put left and and, and your King son on song. Yeah, King on, on 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 one of those songs. It would be cool. Yeah, Whatever we they can make do. that happen. I mean, he, your son already little, loves you, the studio, bro. He, your son's a little younger, but you can definitely. But get he loves him the to, studio. Yeah, like, yeah. And and left has been asking me when he can make a train song. I'm like, I don't know about a train song, but we can, you know, we could do some two two something, you know what I mean? Nah, <laughs> uh, were there any key moments in life that shifted your artistic direction or personal growth? I know you kind of spoke on the Molly situation. Oh yeah, I know that yeah. definitely played a but, big but part. But I think from an artistic direction perspective, I would yeah. definitely say um, we've had so many names of this band, but when I first did. Um, the band, the same band with with Dudat. That's what really like. I realized what type of metal I liked right. to write, and I realized what I wanted to do. I mean, everything. There's secret ones in there, but in this 52 weeks, we've added songs that me and Dudat wrote when we were like 17 or 16 years old, and that has still been maintained. So, bro, I that's beautiful. That. Yeah, yeah. Funny you saying that. So the other day, I um, I was finishing the free lunch project, and I went through my folder at the studio, and I found a bunch of songs that we did mm -hmm. a while ago Which and I um I've been like uh, revamping them with new verses uh I'm, I'm just saying men's chess club needs a no molly no mo I mean we could do it that would be great we could do it I forgot how the so I, entire um, song goes but I just revamped poolside oh recently. shit <laughs> yeah a new balance and I, um, new balance song. I'm I'm <laughs> currently in the process of revamping super sport Oh shit! Yeah, so shit. yeah, okay. there's and what I'm planning to do with them is um, I'm going to put a snippet of the originals at uh, the beginning, all right, and have it like a DJ scratch, and then have the new version come in. Can we do? Can we do versatility? Yes, we can. I have the finished recorded version of that. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> and the iPhone archives. You know? We we definitely can. Um, so same question for you. Uh, what was the key moments that changed? Or shifted your artistic views. Well, back when we used to hang out at Metal Nick's house, yeah, I got introduced to Tech Nine by right. him. It was uh, was it the C page or I forgot? I was, uh, that was all sixes um, and sevens. All sixes and sevens it was yeah, fire. Yeah. Which uh, I still love it to this day. He, Tech Nine would never do another album like that. No he has, sir, he never has. I still love Tech. He's become a a feature rapper at this point, but he's still fire when he brings out a new album. But at the end of the day, when I used to hang, I used to hanging out with Sanchez and Nick. But then it just started being me, me and Nick. Right. And then because of Nick, I got into all types of music. I used yeah. to only listen to hip hop and only hip hop and rap and reggaeton and my Spanish stuff. Yeah. But because of Nick, I love jazz, I love country, I love metal, I love all these types of genres because of him. He made mm -hmm. me fall in love with music I feel in, that. as a whole. So my artistic inspiration, you know, <laughs> came like I guess around that time. Yeah. No, so. I feel that completely because um, <laughs> <laughs> All sixes and sevens do that put me on that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this motherfucker is snapping. I already knew who Tech Nine was, yeah. but I wasn't listening to his music. But um do that came he yeah. I think we were riding to like to the fall to go cop some weed. And he's like, bro, listen yeah. to this yeah. shit. Yeah. And yeah. you know oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> the real Nancy bought one shot. <laughs> Shout out to her. <laughs> so uh yeah, he put me on that and that definitely was like all right, this shit's fire. He also put me on Diane Ward back then too, so. <laughs> Diane yeah. Ward, shit. Well, I, I definitely say do that uh, has opened up uh, my music palette on certain things that I probably wouldn't have listened to on my own. What about you, Nick? What has like changed you artistically? Oh man, I don't even know where to start. Or even just in your personal life. I, I wanna say ECMG. Because yeah. I wasn't really into hip-hop until I started hanging around y'all. I feel Especially that. Emmy. Like, at that time, I was literally just listening to ICP and Cottonmouth Kings. That was it. I thought they were, like, the best in hip-hop. Yeah. And I remember then one this. day, 
I think we were ha- hanging out on the patio. Yeah. And fucking dude that over here comes over. He's like, oh, I found out about this artist. I think you'll like him. Oh, yeah. Come to find out, it's fucking Mad Child. Yeah. That changed me. I think it was Mad Child that changed my look on music. Uh-huh. And that's what really inspired me to find your lane. My lane. Yeah. And like what I really like to, might like the style. And from there, I just, I found other artists that I like. And e- even in the past year or so, or two years, like the, the main artist I listen to that really inspired me is Mad Child. Emmy knows the other one, Cal Scrubby. And yeah. Easy Mac? Easy yeah. Mac a little bit. He's yeah. what inspired the uh, season three throwaway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was actually uh, Easy Mac's beats that I used for all season three throwaways. Okay, got you, got you. And yeah, he's just a, he's just a weird artist. But he, he raps a lot about drugs and alcohol. And at that time, you know, it was after mom passed away. That's all I was doing is smoking and drinking. No, I feel that. And, and I would just smoke and drink to the point where I would just pass out. And then the next day, I would get up and smoke and drink until I passed out again. I just kept that going for a year. Yeah. And like how you were talking about how after your dad passed away, how like... Yeah, I was like, fuck music at that moment. Yeah, me too. I like, all I wanted to do was just get fucked up and pass out. See, King was, my, was probably the reason why I wasn't on that type of time. Because I was like, I got little, man. And I was just pouring into him as much as possible to just not think about that shit, really. But yeah. And I see my King was the fucking bottle. No, I feel you. And I was just drowning myself in that every day. I feel that. I feel and that. then finally, I was like, you know what? Let me just write about it, put it on paper. And then that's what season three came around. And I feel like, bro, that, that one episode when you really got into it, like I told you, you brought me to tears, bro. Postscript? I was, yeah. I yeah. was like, bro, he really got into it. That was a hard one for me to I, I was sure, bro. It was, you know what that made me feel like? It made me feel like when I did season one of um, Free Lunch Fridays, and I did Closer to My Dreams, and I told that story about what I went through. That's how I felt when I heard that song. I was like, bro, really went there. Yeah, no, I did. And, and like, it's pretty much just like, I, f- like, I f- feel like mom's passing was partially because of me. I wish I could have done more to bring her, no, to like help her. And I, I feel like I failed her. But we, we put that type of pressure on ourselves, especially like being in the positions that we are. So I get that. But well, um, shit, we about to be in here crying, bro. I don't know. Yo, for <laughs> real. No, <laughs> no, but I just wanted to, one more thing to add to that is yeah. that uh, recently it was the anniversary, the two-year anniversary of my mm-hmm. mom's passing. Yeah, my sister's her, birthday. And her birthday and all mm-hmm. that. And my mom's birthday was the day before she passed. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then for some reason, this year, it really fucked with me. Mm. It really fucked with me. And Emmy can... Yeah. Attest to that, that I've been distant as fuck from everything, from yeah. everyone. Yeah. Like, even him. And it's not even, it has nothing to do with Emmy. It has nothing to do with anyone else. It's just, lately I've been fighting my own demons. No, I feel that. And I feel like I've been losing. So. No, I definitely get that. And you and I had a good conversation the other day. I'm yeah, we did. I'm looking forward to everything we spoke about. Um, let's, let's lighten the mood a little bit. A little bit, uh, right? Who would you like to collaborate with and why? Like any musician I don't anywhere. I care what genre Ever. it is. <laughs> Shit. Anybody. They have to be alive, though. That's the only yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't be like Tupac. Nigga, that's not happening. <laughs> Come on, Genesis. The, the, the weird Icelandic girl. What's her name? Bjork. Bjork. I Bjork. Would love okay. to collaborate with Bjork. She the weirdest bitch on planet Earth. <laughs> She and makes good music, though, bro. Dude, yeah. if, if I could do a, a black metal version of Pagan Poetry with her, oh, okay. man, that would be... So Bjork, for sure, Bjork. For sure. And Nikki on metal. Oh. Mm. He's put that up there a few times, bro. <laughs> he don't want to do it. <laughs> Nikki on metal. What about you, buddy? <laughs> I mean, I think we already know who I... If I could collaborate I mean, I know, with but anyone... Oh. If I can get Mad Child on a track... That'd if I can get Mad Child on a track... That's that, part that, of your bag. Can he leave Canada? Say what? Can he leave Canada? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He okay, can leave cool. Canada. Cool, cool, cool. I know. I, I, he was banned from America for yeah, a little bit. That's but why no, I he can that. leave. He's actually got a crib in California. Oh, fire. And I, w- I would love to collaborate with Mad Child. Top tier, Mad Child. Second, Vinny Paz. Okay, fire. What about you? He's. Not, I mean, he's from Miami. He's not like... 
I don't want to say he's super famous, but Javi Dade. I feel like I, you know Javi would be surprised. Yeah, me, I, I went to go record him before I knew who he was, and I recorded uh, Emmy, Are You Okay? Mm -hmm. And I remember he brought in his friend to hear the song because I was doing something nice to it or whatever. He was yeah. fucking with it. And then on my Instagram, sometimes he would interact with me, and then he, when I post, so maybe, I don't know if Happy Date ever sees this. Maybe, I don't know I'm how much, tag. you know? That's, that's like, we, reach yeah, out. We tag Happy Date. I feel like me and him could make some type of music. I feel, like, prime. I feel like that, like that Nika Dominican yeah, collaboration would fit, fire. So maybe. Yes, sir. Yeah. Wait, hold sure. on. Going back to me, who I would like to collaborate with. Yeah. I've already collaborated with a producer I've been wanting to collaborate with. I know. With. That was amazing. Fucking okay, shout out to Sea Lance. Second Thoughts. I gotta send it to him. I still haven't sent that yeah, shit. Yeah, definitely to him. send it to him. But I'm gonna send it to Sea Lance or tag him in it or something. But one of the producers I really wanted to collaborate with was Sea Lance, and I actually bought one of his beats exclusively, and that's actually the last track of the Red Viking. And it's a fire song. I you think it was dope that it. you were able to make that happen. I'm sure you felt with that how I felt when I connected with Space and Time, and I did check up. And he was like pushing my shit, like, bro, I'm I'm so happy you did this song. I thought you were gonna say Lil B. I know that you really want to collaborate. Fuck with Lil him. B. <laughs> yeah. stupid. For for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Lil B followed me on Twitter for years, and um, him and I got into a situation one time, uh, <laughs> and he was like, bro, it's all peace and love. Uh, what's your budget? I'll do a feature for you. And I was like, bro, fuck you and your feature. You ask little girls for pictures of their feet, you weird motherfucker. If you ever wanted to sold me, you have to pay me for the feature. So that's why. Look, look, base god. This man I, over I, there. I, you can collaborate that. with me if you want. No, honestly, bro. <laughs> locally, if I could get anybody on the song right now, I'd be do that. But this motherfucker act like yeah. he ain't rapping no yeah, more. Yeah, do that. No rappers are retired rappers. I actually hit that up the other day. I was like, hey, you want to get on the song? He's like, you know we need, what? We need I, you I'll on give it a shot. On a chorus, at least, man. I almost got to do that on the song. As long as it's a hook, chorus. Yeah, you're, I'm yeah. Yeah, I'm in it. <laughs> he still something. has some of my favorite quotables. This oh, man said. Man. <laughs> <laughs> this man said like an Asian Ching Ching Chong. Oh, man. <laughs> so hard. He has a verse where oh, he what says. What about Skippy and Line at Walmart? Skippy and Line at Walmart. What about Miami Ho's Dumb? <laughs> Bro, he has some of the most fire quotable songs. Um. <laughs> and then we have, don't we have Heartbeat Skip with him? Yes. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, yes. man. We should do Heartbeat Skip. We should really. Wasn't it. that my beat? Heartbeat Honestly, Skip? bro. Yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought that was Palmer's beat. No, no, no. no That's was... my beat. Yeah, I think so. Heartbeat Skip. Yeah. I think before this year is done, I'm going to put together an ECMG uh, compilation of songs that we just have sitting. Just have them like remastered and I don't <laughs> know. We're not changing scary, verses though. or anything. No, it's going to be fun. Because you got songs like, like, uh, you got Heartbeat Skip. Yeah. Don't forget, we have Clusterfuck. I don't know if we want to release oh, that. That long ass song. I don't know if we oh my have god. That, though. I, think I that got was it on, in the email. You have, oh, wow. You have the beat? I, I think might. I actually have the beat. If you have that, send that to me. There was like five songs I was able to save the beat. We did it. We remade them a couple of years ago yeah. and I just let them. Like, what was, that, the, what was the one about Love Lost, right? Yeah. Love exactly. Lost. Exactly, Love Lost. Yeah. I have that one that I redid. We could. I still have that session actually. Uh, we could right, definitely well, do that. Okay. You bitch. Yeah. I love that, bro. Found, that's that's one of the it. best that endings Christmas on the song, song ever. That we did. Oh, the Christmas song. We used to have to do that. Yeah. We could do that this year. Xmas or die or something. What was the name of the song? Or White Christmas? White. Yeah. Jingle my bells. Oh yeah, jingle my Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that was my line. I forgot. Um, that's when I tried that singing bit. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got we got Bada Toma. Yeah. Oh, Bada that's yeah. my beat too. I think. Yeah. Sure, that's my beat. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely do like a little ECMG collaborate uh, compilation of old songs and put that out later well, on. Well, I'd also like to let you guys know uh, yes. officially, since since I'll have a lot of time and this is to the world as well, I'm going to begin making hip hop beats again. Beautiful. And, I'm still uh, waiting for you to remaster the one I sent you. Though. Yeah, no, I got you. It's hard okay, though. Okay, okay. Beautiful. But Just but I'm going to be using live instruments only for every single one of them. That's perfect. No, no, whatever. Honestly, if, if I could get you do that and one other person to just fucking do live shows. That's what the goal would be. And then, and then you know, we yeah, have a we really can. good chick who sings. And I, I know I you I think do. that she would be doing some hooks and stuff. So I'm going to put that her to work, be, dude. That would be beautiful. And then the fact that dude will be around to do the collaboration. Y'all got to come see the studio spot. It's kind of. I'm with it. There's a, there's a treadmill and everything. It's great. Oh. <laughs> Running around. But, um, bro, I, 
I asked you a lot of what I wanted to. Uh, what are some studio must-haves? Oh, shit. A UA interface. Beautiful. What else? What about you, Nick? Preparation. Don't come in the studio and talk about I don't have my lyrics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Factual. Can you just drop his name? Or you're not no, I'm not going to drop his okay. name. <laughs> MC Dope. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, like, I got you. I don't know. It never made sense to come to the studio and you're just not prepared for it. It's like, why, why would make the session? Why make the session? I mean, why agree that you're going to be? Yeah, I, I just think it was the fact that they weren't paying for the session that this guy wasn't taking it serious. Even when I'm not paying for the session, should, when you're not paying for the session, bro. when you're not paying for the session, you, we all come prepared. Prepared, yeah, you gotta practice. I, I think Shim was telling us that people were like, book like four hour sessions to write at the studio while that's he's playing crazy the crazy as well, I, I, for one I, song? I get that for certain people. That's fucking nuts. Like, that's why I asked you earlier, do you prefer to create in the moment? Some people can only create in the moment. So yeah. they book a session, they pull up a beat. But do then, you remember? That's when some people the think the best they're session Wayne we ever booked ever. Do you remember that? When you heard my boy? No, it was that girl. Remember that girl that was insane? Actually, yeah, I just had a conversation <laughs> with her recently, yes. <laughs> Me and Shim actually just spoke about that like two sessions ago. So you saying that's hilarious. But yeah, bro, it, you know, <laughs> it'd it be, it be like that. Some pre certain people just need to be in their element in the moment it, when they Didn't she music. tell us that she was, had a lot of occupations that we were like, what? <laughs> You remember that one? I think you don't know which one I'm talking about. Are we, are we talking? The one no. that had a ton of occupations that we were like, the fuck is happening this right now? This is not now? the one we met at Cutler Ridge Mall, is it? Her, may, maybe. No, he's not her talking house about her. house was purple. She had I, purple I never, walls. I ain't never been to the purple house. You talking about Cookie? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we've been through some shit, huh? Yeah, that was funny. Uh, Cookie was this uh, stripper that was friends and roommates with an ex-friend of mine. And the ex-friend of mine was like, crack, I got this girl, she raps, and I want you to meet her. <laughs> and the shit you do for women, dog. We drove up there to meet the girl, and she was just fucking loony. Like, she, <laughs> she was loony. Uh, the, the house had, like, the most awkward door. It wasn't like a knob where you could, like, just turn it and open it. Like, so we kind of felt like imprisoned a little bit. I swear I thought they there. were squatters. I did not think that they lived nah, there. No, they, they were okay. paying for sure. <laughs> but yeah, bro, it was, just a, it was just a weird situation. We've Honestly, I feel like I've worked with more women in Miami than any other artist in Miami. You have. And how's that gone for you? It's been pretty good for the most part. I just feel like I wish a lot of them were more like on top of it. Like, bro, like. There's a lot of girls in my that can wrap their asses off. Mm -hmm. And there's there's some that um I feel like they're just not focused enough to to get to that next level. But if they did, if they locked in, bruh, that would blow. You just gotta, we gotta put them through the fifty two program. I mean, maybe so. Kill them. <laughs> there there are two women in Miami right now that I'm like a huge fan of. One actually just uh, has been doing like a seven day, she just did a seven day run of freestyles, then uh, Tierra Trinice, and the other is this young lady named Chrissy Celeste. They've been snapping and they're fucking fire, bro. Like, I, I have the utmost respect for both of them. Shout out to my boy Eight Ball, he works for, uh, with Chrissy Celeste, and he's like, he's doing his thing down here. Um, shit, bro. What about you, Emmy? What's your studio must haves? Yeah, like what Nick said, just come prepared. When you go to the studio, if I'm booking a three-hour session, I'm knocking out minimum three songs. Not for Like, at a song an hour. Because yeah, I'm not going to go in there and write to us. I'm wasting my money if I go to the studio and do it like that. Just come prepared yeah, to the that. studio. Like, bring your... I started writing on my iPhone because it's a lot easier and a lot faster. Yeah. But just, yeah, just come prepared. I don't so. know. I feel like ECMG is like, we're so on top of it and prepared that we can knock out a song in a half hour. Easily. And we've done Easily. it. Easily. Easily. Because I remember um. one time I went to go record with Shim and I was like, yo, this song is going to take a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was in and out in 20 minutes. Yeah, He's like, like, I thought you were going to take a while. I was like, I guess, I guess not. Nah, yeah. Now that's something that him and I always joke on. Uh, the first time I went to record with him, uh, we had four, we had a four hour session. And, um, we got through. Do that. You were there actually. Garage. This is this is back when he had the in the back of the okay. house. Yeah. It was me. You. It was me. You. Marcus and uh and Chowder. Okay. That's to say how long ago this was. It's like 2011. 
and um, we got like four songs done, and all the lights in the neighborhood went out. It was a complete blackout in that neighborhood, and we were like, "Damn, is this just like?" Wasn't that the last session? The power went out. Yeah, we were joking about that the last session. So the the last session where we we're um when we were finishing finalizing uh, the Red Viking, the power went out for like oh. like ten minutes. Yeah. And Shim just started laughing. He goes, crack, we just spoke about this the other day. Because we had just, bro, it was like, maybe it was like four days after him and I had spoken about our first session ever and how we had the blackout in South Miami Heights mm. that we're in Nixon's session. I had just finished recording, uh, I think the C-3PO verse? No, I had just finished recording higher the higher grade verse. Yeah. And then the lights went out. <laughs> I was like, ain't this a shit? Thank but God yeah, for auto um, my studio must-haves now are water. And the reason I asked this question actually is because uh, the homie DJ H2 asked me this the other day on Twitter. And I was joking with him. I was like, bro, back in the days, I'd have told you straight up, I needed a bottle of gin and I needed some weed. But now, bro, all I need is water. And I'm good. That's really deep, dude. It's funny you said that because the session before you and I had the session, yeah. it was Emmy and I, and I brought up. Six pack of Guinness. Mm. Yeah, That's I like was, water. Actually, when I recorded Second Thoughts, I was three Guinnesses in. Oh, mm. shit. <laughs> Looks like we got five minutes, bro. Oh, we're doing good. I feel like yeah. we did amazing. I'm glad that I got to get all of y'all in here, bro. I feel like I haven't seen all of you fuckers in years now. Yeah, together like this? Yeah, yeah. this is fire. <laughs> Honestly, when I hopped out the car and I saw Dudat's face, I was like, what the fuck? I, I was he not he expecting Dudat. <laughs> I, I didn't tell y'all that he was coming. He texted me and told me that he was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I wasn't going to say nothing. I wanted to be a surprise. No, that was, a def that was yeah. definitely a fucking surprise. But yeah, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of all of y'all on God. Yeah, it's our year. It's our year. Emmy, I, I'm really focused on you getting your stuff done, bro. After, like, at the end of August, I'll be able to get back on my no, feet. I already because know, you know my situation. Yeah, I already yeah. know. I, Bro, everything is with timing. Like, there's no rush on shit. But I definitely want to see you get this, get the Spanish project done. I want to help you with getting your videos done and making sure that everything is where it needs to be. Yes. Nixon, sir, we're gonna get this this coffee break done, bro. This coffee break's gonna be yes, nasty. Yes, sir. Ugh. David, nasty. I can't wait to see what you do. Uh, with oops, you two do that. Um, tell Aileen I said what's up. Yeah. Love to Aileen for sure. Everybody, check out the 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 next song coming out on Friday. It's called Emergency. Okay. And then um, remind him the name of the band though. The name of the band is Broken Puss, at Broken Puss. That's P-U-S, not P-U-S-S, P-U-S on Instagram. Yeah, Puss, not Puss. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, you might mistake it for Puss, but it's actually Emergency puss. drops on uh, on Friday, and then the following week from that, uh, the song 52 is dropping, and um, there'll be a video for both of those. Uh, Y'all check it out, please. And then Oops, our, our first record will be out on Halloween. Give the socials for that one as well. Uh, do you know what it is? There's no what? Oops Band, I think it is. Yeah, the Oops. Oops, oops the Band. The band. Oops, oops, oops the, the Band, yeah. And yeah, uh, uh, check it out. Therapy Next. session from earlier this year. Seven videos, check it out. I just released the Red Viking. You gotta check that out. Coffee Break's coming in October. All right, it's definitely a Nicki Minaj fan around here. Shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, Nixon, you continue, bro? Continue what? Uh, you were saying... I said Coffee Break. Gotcha. Give, coffee give Break's coming socials. out in October. It's a five-track EP with uh, Crack and myself. Where can I get one of the shirts? I want one. You just let me know. I'll get it for you. Okay, so hit Nixon on Instagram, Instagram, right? Twitter. If you want one of the T-shirts. Stand up. Show that shirt, man. Oh, man. We got to show the T-shirt now. Look show at the T-shirt. Hey. The Red Viking. I got posters. I got keychains. I got stickers, magnets, holographic stickers. <laughs> Uh, coming out with coasters pretty soon. Whatever you need, yes, sir, I got yes, it. Sir. All the crazy shit. It's gonna be. It's gonna be available. And there will be a lot more of the El Camino merch coming out within the next few months. I'm um, getting back to the hoodies. I'm um, planning to drop some beanies soon. T-shirts will be coming. Uh, you guys can reach me on all my socials at Crack Cobain. That's C R A two C's. It's not a typo. Uh, that's hey, <laughs> Camino. That's C R A C C Cobain, like Kurt. Because yep. everything I say is mind blowing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I also got the the Red Viking hard copy yes, CDs sir. coming out, and if you want it, you let me know, and I'll get the vinyls for you as well. I want, I want one of each of those. You want each of those? One of each. All okay. right, Emily, let them know your socials, my uh, man. My socials on Instagram, I'm Emmy Alexander. I think Emmy underscore Alexander. Emmy like the awards, Emmy awards, and Alexander, you know, Alexander the Great. And on Twitter, I'm Emmy Alexander altogether, but with an extra R. 
at the end. I've been trying to get the handle from the Instagram, but Twitter doesn't like me because nobody <laughs> has nobody has those handles. But I can't accept it or something. So yeah. What about you, sir? Do that. Um, the best way to find me is just oops the band at Instagram.com, or whatever you call it, Facebook. Mm -hmm. The app, yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, that's about it. Yeah. Buy a Broken Plus t-shirt too, please. Please, there's 52, there's 52 of, them. of them. Yes. <laughs> there's 52 shirts. Tap and get your Broken Plus t-shirts. Tap and get your Red Viking t-shirts. Yeah. Like I said, there'll be more El Camino Media uh, merchandise coming within the next few months. Um, I do appreciate my brothers coming and tapping in with me today. Yes, sir. It's been a great episode. Yes, sir. And we got a lot coming. All right, y'all have a great one. Camino Corner Crack.